Hey everyone, today is Thursday, the 5th of September 2019. This is The Gap, episode 483. I'm Luke Laurie. Job Gorey is here, and how's your week going, Job? You been doing much? Oh, I've been busy as fuck, as I think everyone's about to find out. Yeah. Uh, it has been a busy old week, yeah. Um, what about you? You been busy? Uh, a little bit busy. Today is kind of like the first day that I've actually had a chance to sort of sit down and maybe play some video games and i've not played any video games today um yeah time, so, time to do three hours of podcast then good good stuff <laughs> yeah like it's my kind of the first day i've had off where i'm not really doing anything all the other days i've been kind of running around um yeah sorting out me moving across the fucking world yeah um so yeah. speaking of moving across the world do we ditch saying what day it is no 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 do we it. just maybe aim for like it's it's the week ending <laughs> today september is 6th or something thursday for you yeah but it's, it's not wednesday thursday for, for you me. Today. yeah exactly that's what i'm <laughs> saying right like maybe we you know now that we're mr worldwide uh yeah. maybe we you know worldwide this shit a little bit get a bit broader with it except the fact that i live in the fucking future and now you live in the fucking past and yeah, we can sort of, you know, just stretch it out a little bit. No. Um no, I'm Look, I'm fine just with try it out, right? Giving a date because otherwise it just feels like we're um I don't know. Like I think people need a reference of what date it is. Otherwise they're like listening to it and then like four hours in they're like, Why the fuck are they talking about That's why Gears I'm of War Three? We say <laughs> The week ending the sixth, or something like that. See, this is what I'm saying, right? Like, because we That's too uh, hard. Uh, we aim for a Friday release, right? So, mm. if you were to just work out when the Friday, you already have to do time conversion. Shit. You already have to work out what fucking day it is for me. So, all I'm saying is, obviously, adding a single day to your current day total isn't that complex, but yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Let, listeners. I think you should vote. You should tell us. What do you think? Go to the week ending or just the day shit? Uh, I don't think it ultimately matters. It's inconsequential. But, you know, yeah. why not? I think it's important in a, its own dumb way. Um, yeah. So how was your big move? How was it um, <clears throat> Yeah, it was fine. Like, we, we got in on... We left on the Thursday got in on the thursday um i had to wait a couple of hours to get uh sort of our cats um i have two cats in case people didn't know this mm. and um so we're at the airport we had about 10 bags of luggage between right. the both of us um basically because we've we've moved over to san francisco yeah. and all our stuff has to come with us and uh, so we've got three methods of shipping it. We've got um, the stuff we can take with us on the plane. We've yep. got an air freight, uh, which they package up and they ship it by cargo. And that takes um, a couple of weeks, maybe weeks. two or three weeks. Yeah. Yep. And then we've got our, um, our shipping container, which goes by sea. And then that takes, you know, could take two months, basically. Right. So uh, the majority of our stuff is in the shipping container, which is things like furniture or books, DVDs. Um, there's clothes in there, just like all our kitchenware, that sort of stuff. Um, and then sort of the items that we kind of, you know, can do without for a little bit is in the, the air freight. And yep. then everything else that we kind of needed, like clothes and Your computer. My, all my computer stuff. Yeah. Um, is in the, on the plane with us. And so we had about 10 bags all up. And um, we got to the airport and like, it was a pain to try and find anybody that kind of help us to, to like get anything that we could stack on this stuff. Cause they've got trolleys there, but yep. they're fucking really tiny. Like yeah. it's like they've, they've shrunk them over the years. And they definitely <laughs> have. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you can put maybe three or four of them on there if you're lucky, but like, I've got a box with, I've got like two giant boxes with my computer. It's like 35 kilos. Um, I've got a box of like all my cable gear, my my monitors are in there. And they're not like, they're not square boxes. They're kind of oddly shaped. Um, and so like trying to stack all that on top of each other was 
like we needed something to do that. And eventually we found someone and they brought a, like a giant trolley across and we stacked everything on it, got it out the front. Eventually we had to go pick up our cats and that was a hassle because they told us to be there at four o'clock and we got off the plane at like one thirty. Oh, yeah. We ended up getting over there and we waited about an hour before they would basically give us the cats and like they had no idea what was going on because just fuck her up, fuck ups and whatnot. Right. Um, eventually we got them, we got back into the city um, and started unpacking. We had pretty much everything all ready to go. Um, the only thing I didn't sort of have set up was my, my PC and my uh, computer slash video game gear um so i jumped onto amazon ordered a bunch of stuff on amazon prime um and had that shipped over pretty much well i did that the next day um yep. so that all arrived the next day i bought like new cable gears for you know, obviously for the power and whatnot um so i set all my computer gear up my playstation's up and running my xbox is up and running um hopefully the audio is okay like it's this sort of temporary this setup that i've got at the moment until i I find an actual uh proper apartment um and uh i'll have my hopefully my whole setup within the next couple of um you know month month and a half so yeah the the move was okay um i'm a i'm a fan of like learning all these new things like i've ordered it amazon orders <laughs> i've been using amazon a lot and that's yeah it's great like we don't have that we've got obviously amazon back home but it's not the type of not even level that is the over same here thing. yeah um so i immediately signed up for amazon prime when i got here yep. and um and uh yeah basically ordered like three or four boxes worth of crap stuff that we needed like as i said the power power supply stuff things for the cats um just like phone charges and whatnot just things that you like you can't really that you need to get at some stage so do all that and uh yeah it was here within like a couple of hours um like sorted out all the the local shops that we need to go to for grocery there's a there's a whole foods nearby which is basically amazon prime as well um so i can either go down there and and walk around the shop and get stuff yeah or i can just order it online and they'll deliver it within two hours how long a walk is it like 40 minutes what no um, no pathetic it's, pathetic it's, it's you don't even have anyone to fucking like <laughs> make carry all your fucking heavy shit either so yeah like yeah. anywhere that's like further than five minutes in san francisco is a pain because yeah. it's giant fucking hills everywhere it's all hills yeah yeah and so um everyone no, always yeah. talks about how sydney's like full super hilly but fucking it's got nothing on san fran no. San Fran's basically fucking vertical <laughs> climbs. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've sorted out. Like the Whole Foods is good. It's all like organic food. Yeah. It's not like a Coles or, or Woolworths no. back home. It's it's really Harris Farm. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like your local sort of um, farmers market type yeah. shopping center, but on like a larger larger scale. Yep. Um, so yeah, I went to Best Buy, Best Buy as well. Picked up some electrical gear there. Um, picked up Man of Madame, which we'll talk about later on. Sure. Or, or I'm not actually sure how you, you pronounce that in American because that was a struggle to find that game. Oh yeah. I don't think she knew what I was saying. Oh uh, yeah. Bummer. <laughs> Had to show her the picture. Oh Man of Madame. I was like, oh yes, it's Madon. Man of Madon. <laughs> yeah um but yeah no it's been busy we've been looking at apartments yep um got a couple more to go and see the next couple of days and yeah today's kind of like my day off so it's been good yep. i was gonna good. play some games but i was fucking around trying to get make sure we could record and everything was okay and then i i, I sorted everything out everything was good and then we fired up skype and i'm like it's not fucking working why is it not working it's and it good. turns out i had two copies of skype on here um, and it was I was starting up the old one, and the reason for that is because I um, I had to install a, a newer version of of Windows on my PC when I got here. Um, the only thing that didn't work when I fired up my PC was one of my hard drives um, was not connecting, and so I fucked around with cables and whatnot. And I was like, oh sweet, it's the um, 
did some troubleshooting. I was like, oh, okay, it's just the SATA cable. It's cool. And so when I went to Best Buy, I was like, oh, I need a SATA cable. And she knew exactly what I was talking about. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I got home. Big brain time. Yeah, I got home and set everything up. And it still wouldn't connect. I'm like, what the fuck? God damn and it. like swapping cables around again. I think it's my motherboard. Um, eventually, oh, no. it all started working again. And that's oh. fine. Uh, but anyway, th- that was a different story. That was kind of the only thing that didn't work when I plugged everything in. Um, I was waiting for... Oh, my, my Wi-Fi wasn't working. It had, it had jumped out of the PCI card, the, the slot. And so I just kind of jammed that back in and we're good to go. So yeah, PC survived right. the trip as far yep. as I'm aware. Yep. Um, yeah, and then uh, the other problem I had was with... Uh, so Gears of War 5 is coming out. Mm, and it's out. some Yeah, it's, it's out. No, it's not out yet. It's out for us. Oh, for media, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's out, uh, I think, tomorrow, basically. Right. The time of recording. Um, some awesome person in our chat, I can't remember who it was, might have been JB, put in the uh, like the CNET guide of how to purchase three years worth of um, the Ultimate Gamer Pass by basically loading up your Xbox Live account Yep. And then going and doing, it's like a $1 um, yep. sort of discount on the Ultimate Gamer Pass and it applies it to however long is left on your Xbox Live subscription. And so the maximum you can do, I think, is like two and a half um, sort of years. And so I signed up for that. Um, bit of an issue signing up for that. It seems like every time I go to use the X, the Microsoft Store, I have a problem. Yep. <laughs> it was like quantum break. <laughs> <laughs> like every time I go and use it, I'm like, fucking this store is, I've got to like talk to someone in support to try and help me. Yeah. And this time it was because I was using a payment device that wasn't in the current location where I was. Um. Even though I'm using PayPal, which is weird because yeah. who the fuck cares? Like I never have any problems at all buying anything. Like I'm I'm using all my Amazon stuff, yep. using credit cards and whatnot. It doesn't matter. But for whatever reason, every time I tried to buy, um, I, every every time I tried to subscribe on the the Microsoft store to this thing, it was like, oh, there's something wrong with your purchase. And then so I had to chat to this dude, and he's like, oh, you, you're um it thinks that you're in a different region so it's not working i can charge it directly if you want now i'm like yeah okay whatever just fucking do it um and so i did all that got all that sorted and then i jumped back into the store and none of the games would let me install and i'm like okay this is weird um so i fucked around with that for a while i was contacted microsoft support again i'm like hey i'm having this issue i can't install any games on game pass um I might have something to do with me. Like I, I just moved last week. There's something weird going on. Like, I don't know if that's a problem or it's something else. And eventually like after like an hour and a half with this guy, um, cause I ended up checking on my Xbox and my Xbox worked. Like I could install games that way. Fine. It's just on the PC. Right. Wouldn't let me install anything. And he ended up palming me off basically to fucking the Xbox insider program to try and get help from there. Um, which I was, you know, I'm busy fucking moving. I didn't have time to sit around for however long and sort all this stuff out. And so I, I just chucked a, um, like a support ticket up on the forum, like the Xbox forum, and some random person started helping me on the, they've got like a really good chat program where people right. can start talking to you. Okay. Um, yeah, and some dude just like talking to me, asking me like what error I'm getting, uh, you know what have i tried that sort of stuff and he's like yeah try try downloading the new um xbox app which is in like a beta at the moment um, right and so i tried that and it didn't work it came up and said there was an error um and then it basically said that i needed to update to the latest version of windows which is the may feature update 2019 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so i installed that mm-hmm. when it wouldn't let me at, the, at first it was kept coming up with some error saying that like we're not ready to install it in your machine i was like F- all right so i figured out how to force that install and it checked all like oh yeah your computer's up to you know scratch it'll find it's all good so i forced that update um and that fixed all the problems like i could now install all those games again like it seems to be tied to that may 
It fixed all update. those problems. <laughs> yeah, it created another problem for me. So now, <laughs> so now I have no search bar. Like whenever I click on my type to search here button, and it's just fucking blank. And I've been, I must have spent like two hours today trying to fix it. I'm out of ideas. I feel like the next step for me is like reinstalling Windows. Um, yeah. I, I use that Starting a lot. Starting from I don't, fucking scratch. I don't yeah. think you'll let you realize how much you use that thing. Like, I'll just click on and go like VLC and then bam, or like Skype or OBS or Discord. And now I'm going to actually click start you. the old way and like fucking scroll down a giant list and be like, what am I like, looking for? Shit. Yeah, so you can't press like, the Windows key and just start typing? No, nothing comes up. Like, Maybe it's the on the wrong screen. Up. That's it. Because you're down the screen, aren't you? Yeah. Because it's definitely it doesn't doesn't show up on my second and third monitors. It only right. shows up on my primary monitor. It's there, so maybe... but I just can't like when I type stuff. Nothing. Oh, okay. Comes comes up. Well, I don't know. Um... Yeah. Anyway, so that's kind of been my only sort of teething problems out of this move. Um, we'll get there in the end. Yeah. 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 Cool. There was a um, a sale on Amazon for Intel products, and I was hold really up, close hold on, hold on, hold on. Speaking of, of that awesome, that awesome <laughs> fucking thing that JB Johnny Bravo pointed out, the which I believe still currently works. Uh, yeah. If you listen to this, definitely check to see if it is. But uh, I believe it's still working. Uh, when I did it, because I did it as well, because I'm like, ah, fuck it, may as well, uh, just in case. Um, and uh, I also did it because my little brother hit me up. So I told him about it. And my little brother hit me up and couldn't get it to work. And he was losing his fucking mind. He's like, no, it's just, it's taken my fucking 12 months. It's taken my money. And now it won't let me fucking, won't let me fucking sign up. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And he's talked me through it. And so I was sitting there in fucking Discord with Johnny Bravo and Nate before we played some Gears of War, hmm. uh, me and Nate were going to play Gears of War, JB couldn't, um, and um, fucking just talking through it. And it was maddening. It was just like looping and looping and looping. You know how when you fucking do tech support for your fucking grandma or some shit and you're like, stop, please just shut up. You don't know what you're talking Just stop trying to fucking fix things. Just do what I'm telling you to do one step at a time and confirm you've completed that step anyway we got through all of the steps and he's like no it's still not working i'm like i i've got no f so i literally sat there and did it myself on my own account all like i went through the whole fucking process with him mm -hmm. right step by step by step by step and it worked for me and i'm like it literally just worked for me like we as far as i could tell i'm not there with you Alex, but as far as I could tell, we literally did the same fucking thing, right? So how the fuck have you got a different outcome? And uh, and he's like, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm like, take a screenshot of what you can see and send it to me. And it had worked. He was just reading the dates wrong. He apparently just fucking couldn't read dates for that, that fucking entire period of time and so i spent literally a fucking hour on a fucking skype call with him just doing nothing why didn't just... you share the screen um because that would have been a whole thing i would have had to fucking like walk him through doing that as well like it was it seemed it like, like it two was... seconds on skype does it i thought it was a lot harder no i think there's a button you just press like share screen i accidentally do it all the time on here for you really <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I do it. I never notice. Or are you seeing my screen? Oh no, um, because I don't get the step where I actually do it. It uh, just like pops up. I was like, "What would you like to share?" I'm like, "Oh fuck, what have I done?" Uh, nothing. Oh fuck. Yeah, I well, thought I was anyway. closing at something. Should have done that then. Oh well. Um, nevertheless, it was infuriating, uh, but it worked out. And yeah, I mean, I already had Gears of War, but I got Blair Witch. Which is pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I've been using that for Blue Witch. Yeah. Um, talk about that. <laughs> well, you, you were going to say something else about Amazon, I believe. Uh, oh, no. I was just doing like Amazon had a bunch of Intel deals. Ah, uh, right. I nearly yep. pulled the trigger on um, a bunch of new yeah, stuff. Even though, I, even though everyone, 
<laughs> goes AMD these days. Yeah. AMD is the new hotness. Intel's the new notness. That's what I'm saying. Everyone's mm. AMD now. All AMD all day. Yep. So I got in on that trend early. Old trendsetter Jobo with his computer that can't play some games for some reason. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah Blair Witch. Uh, yeah. Uh, Blair Witch. Uh, so, I don't know what your history with the Blair Witch series is like. Oh, uh, that fucking... I don't know if anyone could hear it. That fucking plane that's been flying for the last, like, 16 fucking minutes <laughs> was a skywriter, and he's written... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that says. Uh, the the <laughs> corgle? I think it says the corgle. I don't know what the fuck the corgle is. Oh, he's got, he's still going. He's just far enough away that I can't hear anymore. Uh, anyway, is it yeah. the coalition? The corgs? The corgs? Maybe it's some Xbox Sky. Oh, that that'd be good. I can that'd be good when I can hear their plane right now. The cogs. And I'm ripping into Gears 5. Um, anyway, <laughs> Blair Witch. I don't know what your history with Blair Witch is like, but uh, I um, I was old enough to go and see Blair Witch when it first came out in the cinema. Hmm. And I went and saw it at a movie marathon. Uh, I was actually in for a different movie marathon, um, but everyone started clapping at the end of Remember the Titans, and I didn't want to be in that audience anymore. So I left and went into a different movie marathon. Uh, that's how it worked in those days. A movie marathon, if you're not familiar with the concept, is four movies in a row, uh, back to back to back, with like a 15, 20 minute break in between. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and usually it's like a all night locking. You go in at like 10 o'clock, and you don't come out until like six. Uh, and so there were a couple of really good ones. There was a Matrix one that I did once that was really good um, I think I think there was a Star Wars one that I didn't do because uh, I was too disillusioned at that point about the uh, the the prequels sure it was I believe it was starting with the prequels um, or it was only the prequels maybe I don't know anyway I didn't want to do that um yeah, this one, uh, we used to just go just to hang out. Like, nobody was really watching the, the films all that much. Um, but, yeah, remember the Titans? Everyone was fucking locked in. And at the end, literally the entire cinema was, like, fucking applauding. And I'm like, I can't be among these people. I've clearly picked the wrong fucking marathon. So, whoop, away I go. Um, pretty sure it was this pretty sure it was the same one anyway uh went into the the next cinema across because they always had like six four to six different marathons going on at any one time at the browns plains the grand plaza cinemas there uh and so you just sort of fucking walk into another one um and if you were sitting in someone's seat you just move uh instead of being a dick hole and uh that was it you know like easy peasy you go see the movies you want they weren't checking tickets once you were through uh we even went to a couple where they weren't chicken tickets after the first movie was finished because hmm. they were all like minimum wage. I didn't give a fuck anymore. Uh, so you just walk in. Uh, easy, easy. And uh, yeah, went to Blair Witch and honestly didn't think that much of it. And I get scared in films pretty easily. Uh, I get scared in everything pretty easily. I'm like, because I lock in, right? Like I fucking embody the the concepts the the character uh so it has to be generally pretty silly for it to not scare the fuck out of me um like that what was that brahms movie that browns movie the the boy remember that movie uh, the, the fucking doll i think it's the boy yeah like terrible terrible fucking that's the most recent i guess hellboy was supposed to be a little bit scary but i mean fuck that movie Oh, yeah, Pet Cemetery, <laughs> But that got me. That got me a couple of times. Yeah, that, definitely. Uh, there's a... Like, those were some good scares. Uh, no, like, that was silly, but, like, still got me. Like, has to be really rough to not get me at all. And, yeah, the Blair Witch Project didn't get me at all. Um, yeah, so... I mean, the Blair Witch didn't really have... I guess it was more tense than... But it, it didn't feel scary. tense to me. Scary... 
Yeah. Maybe it was the atmosphere as well, you know, the... Because those... You weren't, like, sitting there super locked in on what was going on on the screen. You were, like, sitting there hitting on the girls next to you and joking about with your mates and you weren't paying super attention and making fun of the person who was trying to not bath because of the motion sickness and all that kind of stuff. Um, so... Yeah, maybe maybe I never really gave it the, the chance to get locked in, but uh, there was another fucking. There there have been more Blair Witch movies, right? Yeah, there have been. Um, there was a second one, and they did a reboot. A re- um, I didn't watch the reboot. I did watch the second one, and that was dumb as well. Like I just didn't think much. It was of that. like the Book of Shadows or That's something. That's what it was. Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the thing about the first one was it had this whole cult thing about sorry cultural sort of um like whether or not it was real or not like yeah. this is back before i mean the internet was around but it was wasn't as big as what it is now and so it was like a word of mouth thing where you nobody really like people thought it was real <laughs> that's it was like the original creepy pasta yeah. you know like uh some sort of staged uh scripted concepts that uh wound up you know that was presented as real and wound up you know taking on a life of its own mm-hmm. uh, you know people not only did people go and hunt the Blair Witch but uh, people also actively attempted to make it look like the Blair Witch was real as part of like that was their prank on the world was you know making it seem like she actually it actually existed um, and yeah like yeah that's that's pretty cool. Like as a cultural phenomenon, uh, I won't discount it. I just didn't think it was a particularly strong movie franchise, and I never bought into whether or not it was real. Um, and the fact that there was a blatantly bad sequel sort of sold me on how it never really was. And I think that they sort of betrayed. Like I don't think it's a strong enough franchise to really carry. Um, the horror concept on its own like it's not like sure. like there are some horror franchises that you would go and see like halloween right like right uh some that you just go and you you're like well it's but yeah but it's a halloween movie so i'm gonna go see it right like but i don't think blair Witch ever really reached that i don't think it deserves a reboot and and uh yeah, I was weird, weirded out when they announced that it was getting a, a game in the, very much in the vein of Outlast because I was like, isn't the fucking power of Blair Witch the idea that it might be real? Like, how does a fucking video game work? Hmm. Um, but that said, I've only played, I think, an hour of it. But... Okay. And it's a slower start, and it doesn't do a very good job of telling you where the fuck you're supposed to go. But it got me pretty good. It got me pretty good. Uh, the slow start sort of did a good job of like reeling you in. Um, like at, at first, you start you start and you in a driving sequence where you're not actually driving. You're just sort of talking on a phone. Yep. Um, and then after that. Yeah, like it, you walk up and steal some cunt's fucking walkie-talkie. Uh, you blatantly steal someone's walkie-talkie. And then you just sort of wander off into the woods. And mm. it doesn't really give you that much idea of where you're supposed to go. You're, you've you got your dog friend, Bullet, and he does an okay job of like directing you, but not a great job. Uh, I got lost, fairly lost, and I don't know how I managed to get back on track because I'm pretty good orienteering wise uh, in games. I'm pretty good at that shit. Like I generally have a decent idea of where the fuck I am and where I'm looking sure. uh, relative to where I've been. Um, I'm pretty good at that shit in real life as well, but in video games, yeah, I just find it very easy because, uh, like, generally games have landmarks like even subtle landmarks like an inconsistent amount of trees or something is enough 
to be a landmark so that you can direct where you're going next. Mm -hmm. So I, I honestly don't know how I wound up finding my way back on track because as far as I could tell, I was retracing my own steps uh, and there were a number of like landmarks where I definitely was like moving over ground I'd trodden before, but it didn't really matter, I guess. Uh, it got me in the right direction eventually. And once it did that, like once it started to play around with, I guess what I think was happening was it was playing around with my situational awareness you know like i think that's I what it's trying to get you lost yeah it's, it's deliberately trying to get you lost uh and so it that made me un, like unsettled right it unsettled me to believe i knew where i was going and still wind up in a different place and also using that to progress the the player character through the game it's a really good idea uh, and then it introduces you know the uh, PTSD uh, side of things mm -hmm. where bullet your dog which you can pat and you can reprimand although I never have uh, and you can like make him find stuff or call him tell him to stay tell him to run somewhere you can do all that kind of stuff uh, he's, he's quite commandable um, he's also a support dog and if you're away from him from him for too long it's uh it's bad for you like you start to get scared yeah um, vision sort of decreases and gets blurry and stuff like that and there's like predators like hyena pictures everywhere no that's ancestors um yeah like your your vision blurs and, and you, like the, the heartbeat starts playing and like you're it feels like the walls are closing in on you like ah shit's going bad i don't know what happens if you don't find bullet um I don't, like i don't know how that works necessarily but um yeah it feels like it's extremely important that you find your dog again uh which is good because you make a connection with the, the dog always good you can pet him fantastic you get back on track and then yeah after that right uh things sort of spiral downwards from there and i think it's a really like it does a really good job of that like yeah, I wasn't about it. I was literally walking around making fun of shit, uh, which is roughly my Blair Witch experience. And then once that stuff sort of kicked in, I stopped. I stopped making fun of it. I started paying more attention and getting locked in so that when uh, the first real scare occurs, it fucking got me proper good, um, which I think is good. Right. Um, it does like it. It really earns. It earns the scare, which I think is yeah, top. You know, it's it's what a horror game needs to do. Um, it's too easy to just sort of. I, I felt like Outlast, or was it Outlast two? One of the Outlasts, sort of just. I had you in a scary setting. Whichever one was in a, a, a asylum, hmm. uh, had you in a scary setting. Uh, and had spooky music, and then scary shit happened, like jump scare shit happened. Uh, and that seemed, it didn't really earn it as much, in my opinion. Whereas this feels more like the way Amnesia did things, where you're slowly beginning to understand, like everything's pretty silly to start off with, and uh, he's looking for fucking dicks and stuff, and there's an invisible monster but you don't really know about that stuff you're more like ah this, this is goofy this is goofy and they're like hang on that's a bit weird wait up that doesn't make any sense hold up what the fuck was that and then you're like fucking in right like you're like oh shit oh no no more ro like laughing about dicks there's a fucking invisible monster or some shit right that's th that's what I, th I think Blair Witch is doing more amnesia than Outlast it might be right. because yeah yeah, there's definitely it's different jump styles, scares. right? Yeah, it's, it, it, it doesn't lean on the jump scares. It leans on actual tension and a build to terror, which is good. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it, it's, it's, it reminds me a lot of a, uh, like a walking simulator game. Like it's giving you this illusion of it being an open 
Yeah. Well, not an open world game. Well, like, there's open areas, but really, at the end of the day, all you're doing is following this dog around. Yeah. Um, and he's leading you from your objective to your next objective, from what I've played so far. Yeah. Which is a decent chunk. Um, yeah. Because that first area that I think you're talking about is kind of where you're you're sort of following bullet around and finding things on the ground um and it's pretty hard for you to find stuff unless he's guiding you to specific areas because uh, unless they're in like the middle of a pathway or something some of this stuff is just often like a sidewalk in behind a bush or something like that and it's really hard to see um so that first area i think is really sort of teaching you that you need to follow him around quite a bit like he'll guide you to where you go and then once you find like the you know the baseball cap and on that sort of thing that's when it really kicks off and it starts to be like it starts to branch out in terms of the areas you can go to or like mm-hmm. the pathways you can go to but you still um you can definitely go and explore but it, you're really supposed to be following this dog and him leading you to the next sort of checkpoint or whatever you're doing um it really so like hammers that in a eh, too because i remember yeah. like just after finding the police car mm-hmm. um there's a little tunnel that you can go down to to a padlock but it took me fucking ages to make fucking bullets stay in one place because he wanted to run off in the correct direction and i wanted to go explore down this fucking tunnel and mm-hmm. see what was going on but he absolutely did not want me to go down there and so like the first three times I got like halfway down the stairs and the fucking heartbeats hammering and my vision's blurring. I'm like, oh, I'm too far away from the fucking dog. And so I go back up the stairs. I call the dog back. I'm like, stay, stay. And then the third time I like fucking pet him. And it seems like he will stay in one spot for a little while if you pet him. Like he's just sort of happy for a bit. And then I fucking booked it down the stairs uh, to see what was down there. Then it was just a, it was a, Door Did you that I can sort open. that out? Uh, no, I, oh. I haven't worked it out. I, I, I wasn't going to brute force it. I tried for about two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> gave up. Um, but yeah, so it's try. It's sort of this illusion of a um, like it's it's a feels to me like a walking simulator that it's sort of leading you along the path of following this dog around, um, like there's I feel like there's um, even the, the the scares you're talking about like that first encounter mm. I struggled quite a bit to figure out what was going on um, to the point where I just basically looked wherever the dog was looking yeah uh, I don't know if that's what you were doing but I would just look at the dog yep. where is he looking and then I'd shine my torch in that direction and it would attack whatever was out there like I couldn't I don't know if my fucking vision is going. It was definitely not going. I did an eye test recently. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. But I, I, like, Weird I couldn't... flex, but okay. It, it, it would, like the, the beam on the actual light flashlight would go really yeah. bright and then it would sort of attack it or something and then the thing would run off. Alan Wake style. Yeah, I, I'm, I can't see what I'm... Like, is this, am I supposed to be able to see this thing? Is... I mean, I recorded it, right? And I've watched it back a couple of times and I can't see anything. Yeah. Like, there's nothing there. You're just, sh- I, just shining the fucking light into the darkness. I attack the darkness. Hmm. Uh, yeah, like, there's nothing there. I was literally just looking where the dog was looking and shining my torch. Because I, I had no fucking idea. Right? Like, what are you yeah. supposed to do? I thought I was just doing something wrong at that stage. And, and so it becomes a point of me. I'm no longer... I'm no longer using the flashlight to look for something like, oh, maybe there's something hiding behind a fucking tree or something like that. Like there yeah. are occasions where you do see stuff, right? Um, and I have seen something, yeah. You know, and I think it's that thing. But um, for the majority of the cases that that I'm getting attacked by this thing, I'm just l- literally looking at my dog, and pointing yeah. my flashlight in the area. It's just not super engaging, I guess. I'm just like I've I've figured the trick, and right. so I've just yeah it's really easy for me to get past those bits at the moment um but i in saying that and that that sort of stuff's only happened a couple of times in terms of um these little like gimmicky game parts Uh, but i I like what it's doing with toying with the environment 
um, and sort of your perception of time and things like that, sort of what's going on around you. Um, Because the the story is that you're looking for this kid that's gone missing and you're helping like the local law enforcement try and um, like find this kid and he ends up finding a lead which is really early in the game and like the law enforcement is like stay there like we'll come get you but he sort of goes off on his own and that's when he sort of gets trapped in you know whatever is going on here um and so it, it's got this like um camcorder sort of system or game mechanic where you can find these tapes and it progresses the story it kind of fills you in on sort of what's going on and um some of them are like purely just story elements and other ones are like game mechanics where you'll find an item and you'll have to sort of scrub through the video footage and um, you can pause it and rewind and sometimes it makes that item come into effect in the real world yep. or what's going around around you or for in, for instance there um, I'm at a bit that I've gone past where there's like a downed tree in your path and you need to rewind the video footage to the point where the tree has not fallen over and that kind of clears you know it's like a little puzzle bit that i got trapped in that tree i got stuck in it like unable to move tree yeah yeah like uh which is pretty (laughs) good was pretty pretty tops yeah Uh, i was amused Uh, but obviously it was pretty easy to fix Hmm. why just getting rid of the tree but yeah no i like that i like that idea i mean it's a that's a cool idea to make you really pay attention to little elements in these videos and to what and to tie the whole thing back to the camcorder which i think is a critical element of the blair witch franchise um yeah but i don't know it's it's pretty simplistic puzzle solving as puzzle solving goes yeah, uh, it's it's not that complex. Um, yeah, which I don't know. I'd like. I prefer it more if there were some other subtle, like other things that might. It seems like it's just one thing in a tape, right? That will show up. I um, think so. At the time being, like. Yeah, but it'd be cool if sure. you could sneakily, if you're looking in the right spot, you could sneakily find something extra or whatever um maybe there is <laughs> maybe I don't know, and we haven't seen it there's a chance but yeah yeah so i kind of like what it's doing with that and then also the 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 way that um the environment sort of changes as well like you'll you'll get to places and things will happen and you're sort of retreading where you've gone but things have sort of changed and like you don't know whether or not the character like you talked about this ptsd stuff you don't know whether the character's going like it's something to do with the character or whether it's the world around you that's going that's that's causing you to go weird um and then you're also interacting with characters using this walkie-talkie and mobile phone um yeah and just sort of like the elements the way those things sort of mix in between each other you really don't know what is real and what isn't i guess um yeah. you know are the conversations you're having with these people real or is it part of whatever weird thing is going on in this game um, yeah so i like that's so, like the atmosphere it's going is uh is pretty good um but yeah like i'm feeling it's pretty it's not doing anything i haven't seen before yeah um but at the same time it's still i'm still enjoying it for what for what it is yeah which is good hmm. um yeah i'll continue to to play it i think um which is not something I expected. I, I actually went into it thinking I'd just sort of make fun of it. Um, I definitely, I set up my uh, webcam to record me playing. This is, uh, I suspected, you know, anytime I play a, a horror game, I think it's probably worth me doing that um, because I, I do like to, I mean, I, I like seeing how I react to shit, to be honest. Like, I find that fucking interesting, like really interesting because I know in the moment, uh, I, I'm not like thinking about what I'm going to look like on camera or anything. I'm just fucking freaking the fuck out. Um, so yeah, Hmm. it's, yeah, it's got me. I'll I'll continue to play. I want to see what the deal is. Although I do find the main character dude 
to be pretty fucking unlikable, which is never a good thing. I think the acting is just pretty... Oh, yeah, it's not anything outstanding. It's not outstanding, but yeah, I think he's written to be kind of a dickbag. And I understand oh, yeah, that, you know, obviously he's got some mental health issues, but uh, that doesn't really, you know, mean that much to me. Um, sure. <clears throat> this doesn't excuse him being a, a dickbag necessarily. They haven't done anything like there's this concept in screenwriting called save the cat, right? Where you've got to do something uh, to make the character likable. Uh, like even if they're intensely unlikable, they have to have one redeeming thing. They have to have saved the cat for that one moment to link, like to tie you in uh, and, and link sure. you to the character as someone that you want to root for to win at the end, right? Uh, and I haven't seen the, like, he's kind of just a fuckhead the entire time. He's a, sh he's a shitbird on the phone to his wife, girlfriend, whatever, like, at the start. Uh, he steals a walkie-talkie. Uh, <laughs> we get the, you know, the fucking idea that he's there to help save some kid who's gone, yeah, gotten as missing. As far as we know, yeah. Yeah, but... Like, there's nothing... That's not an action. That's not an actual, like, committed action for him to have saved anyone. Right. Uh, I mean, because so, at the start of that, you get the confrontation with the the deputy or the sheriff, whoever's leading up this thing, saying, like, like what are you doing here? Go home type thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's not necessarily him doing the right thing, you know? Like, it's not... It doesn't tie him to being... The, the good guy he's not necessarily the protagonist at this point Bullet's the protagonist Bullet's the character that you want to see win uh, and you are there trying to make sure Bullet doesn't get hurt um, but yeah they haven't yeah, they haven't done anything to save the cat per se uh, and I think it's technically from a writing standpoint too late um, for them to do that maybe they'll do save the dog save the dog yeah, maybe. I mean, it would work, right? Like, the the whole idea behind Save the Cat is that it literally is just being a good person about literally anything. Uh, and, like, literally any moment you can show where they are relatable uh, and also, some, like, minorly heroic is good enough. Uh, and, like, all the way down to... Yeah, the whole the whole idea save the cat literally is about like you could have the worst character in the world, but if they were to like pick a cat up and put it off the road, hmm. then that would be enough to link you. And you just don't see anything like that in Blair Witch, which I think is a mistake from right. a writing standpoint. Uh, and obviously, you know, save the cat is not the fucking uh, be all and end all, uh, but it is a really like it's once you. Once it's in your mind, uh, it is an interesting way to look at movies and it's a very interesting way to think about storytelling from that, like, in, in that perspective mm -hmm. of what, like, you start to, a lot of stuff starts to come together when you're like, oh, why isn't this character particularly likable to me? And if you wind all the way back, you can often boil it back down to oh they were never really a fucking protagonist <clears throat> yeah makes sense uh, but yeah anyway uh, I'll continue to play Blair Witch and, I don't think yeah, it's very long I think it's like five hours from what I've heard that's um, a good that's a good amount of time we were talking about fucking Alien Isolation the other day yeah, and about how true. that game is about three times the length this should be <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I want my horror games to be fucking short and punchy because hmm. otherwise yeah the tension dissipates and is replaced by tedium, sure. which is yeah. not what you want. Anyway, um, <clears throat> speaking of horror-ish games, I finished Control. Right, you, you were pretty. I feel like you were pretty close to the end. I was pretty close to the end. You uh, Panopticon around that area last. I was. I was in the Panopticon. Uh, I wound up doing what you did, which is eight hours of fucking side missions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm glad I did. Um, sort of filled out a lot of shit for me, a lot of like storyline stuff. Yeah, like tons uh, of storyline stuff. Yeah, yeah. It really built out the world, which made it totally worthwhile. 
Um, I didn't feel like like it was worth a lot of points uh, that built me up as a character, but I didn't fucking need any of them. No. Uh, once I maxed out uh, uh, telekinesis, yeah. yeah. Once I maxed out launch, it didn't fucking matter. Everything it's super OP. Uh, That's like the one that I would. I maxed out all my points and launch first, and I was just yeah. like, no one can touch me anymore. Yeah, <laughs> maxed out energy shield. a little bit to uh, just like just like you max out energy literally just to lower downtime on launch, so that you can spend a little less time pointlessly shooting uh, <laughs> to make make things duck a little bit, and then you sure. start launching shit again. Um, but yeah. Uh, Still, I still wanted to. Uh, I'd still like to do a spoiler cast. I won't talk too much about the story. I thought it was a, a good story. Uh, I thought it went some really interesting places. Um, by the end, uh, a little bit predictable, I thought, uh, but it did it in some really interesting ways. Uh, that that sequence right at the end where you're uh, making copies. Do you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah. You're the new girl. Mm -hmm. um, that sequence at the end, I thought was uh, really well done. Um, oh, yeah, I think the whole like, uh, I don't want to get into spoilers, but the, I, I basically think from the the ashtray maze up until the end is fucking like so well done. Like the ashtray maze, that whole sequence is yeah, is really good. Super um, trippy, yeah. And there's a thing that happens in the game just before the bit you're talking about, where I was like, I was like, what? that's it yeah <laughs> and then like it, it keeps like stuff keeps going i'm like oh it's fucking so cool and the yeah. way they do it is really is really uh i thought it was really well done yep. um because i think even you were talking about like <laughs> you were you were surprised that that happened like you came back and things were still going yeah <laughs> like just um, really vague um so yeah i think the whole that that sort of from the ashtray maze up until the end of the game Mm. Um, there's a lot of cool things there like the boss fights can kind of keep them or leave them I think they're pretty they're pretty average boss they fights they lead or... to the one major final criticism I have which is the checkpoints in that game are fucked and I I literally cannot see a single reason why they are the way they are except for being bound to the control point yeah, like wanna, yeah but it is they chose where to put those fucking control points and they chose how to do those checkpoints and there's literally no reason why you should have to like there's no fucking in-game narrative reason why you should have to go back to a fucking control point so just spawn me back in the fucking boss room and let me fucking start it straight up because it's making me fucking run through a bunch of shit all the way back like the fucking fridge fight Oh, it only took me a couple of goes, but I hate fucking running back to it. Or the fucking anchor, like, good god! Yeah, I think the anchor took me two goes. Fucking, yeah, but like, <laughs> it's it's two goes, two attempts. Oh no, it took me like four attempts because I was trying some stuff. I was trying to like hover out and get some cheeky extra attacks in mm. uh, on the on the weak point. Sure, and then. Uh, like, I didn't have enough hover time, so I would, like, <laughs> float down, and she won't fucking grab a ledge for the fucking life of her. Uh, and also, I didn't fucking... Didn't hit the weak point, so I didn't save myself any time anyway. Like, all... And then I'd have to run all the fucking way back, and I'd have to listen to her be like, oh, more clocks! Ah. And, like, the, <laughs> the third time she says that line, you're like, you fucking bitch. You match clocks again, and I'm gonna fucking do you. I'm gonna um, clock you. I'm gonna clock you, can I scout? Uh, but it's also like there's a fucking there's a, a little bit of jumping as well like there's some fucking jump trickery that you have to go through to get over that fucking get into the boss room itself uh, it's just a mad pain in the fucking dick and then yeah you fucking you get through it and you're like cool well that was fucking pointless um, it's, it robs robs the like game of its reward state and it makes you very keen to not experiment at all like you basically what you learn from that fight is just do exactly what you're supposed to do do not try to do it any interesting way 
Because if you do it any interesting way, you'll be fucking running all the way back, right? And it might not be true later on. Later on, you might actually, there might be some cool ways to do stuff, but Mm. there's no incentive for you to do it that way because the downside, the risk uh, to reward ratio is cooked. Like, it's utterly fucked. So you're better off just playing it safe the whole way through so you don't have to fucking do a stupid fucking run back. Um, yeah. They could, like, there's no reason why the checkpoints had to be the way they were. And it bugs the fuck out of me. Because mm-hmm. uh, you could literally just, yeah, you could literally just spawn back in the fucking start of the fight or whatever instead yeah. of having to do the run. Uh, so yeah, that's my last major criticism of control, and I would love to see it fixed. I don't, I cannot understand in any way why it is the way it is. Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to find out someday why they did it that way. Um, because yeah, by the end, those boss fights are lengthy, right? Like they take some time. That last boss fight, well, boss fight, uh, it's not short. Right, like mm. you, there's some stuff to do in it. You know, you gotta, you gotta get some shit done, and yeah, it's just a crotch punch to have you set back even further before, you know, the latest lengthy portion that you're up to. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, yeah. Other than that, loved it. Uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed the game. Uh, I do understand. I understand some of the cryptic bullshit you were talking about last week, uh, where you were talking fucking riddles. I'm like, I don't want to fucking, I don't want to directly question what the fuck he's talking about, because <laughs> uh, he might be fucking hinting at some stuff, and I don't want to fucking know. But what the fuck are you talking about, Luke? Um, yeah, a lot of it makes sense now. Um, yeah, it's, it's all fallen into place. It's all coming together. Um, yeah, which is cool. And yeah, uh, I would I would absolutely play a Control 2 or an Alan Wake 2 or whatever the fuck it resulted in. Hmm. Uh, the, yeah, the outcome of Control, whatever it resulted in. I'd be about it because it was fucking awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the last... Uh, yeah, it goes some. It definitely goes some places. Um, I'm, I'm just still a bit. I thought the game was going to review higher. I think it settled at like an 85, which is right. which is good because it, it was going down at one stage. It was towards like an 80 on Metacritic, and it's sort of gone back up, which is good. I think 85 to somewhere around there is 85 to 90 is good. I, I wouldn't give it. A, I wouldn't tan it or anything like that. No. Um, I'd probably. I'm around there as well, like an eight. 8.5 yep. maybe 9 I'm not not too sure um, it's a good spot anyway really good game and I believe it went on sale as well in a couple places um, oh really yeah the Amazon was having a sale I saw on Twitter people were saying oh. to, to definitely grab it is this podcast um, brought to you by Amazon now or what I wish I Captain so. Amazon over here <laughs> fuck no yeah. um, should we talk about Ancestors quickly sure uh, I, I didn't play a lot since then. I, I chucked a, it on last night when I had a bit of spare time. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a hard game to get back into once you've had a, a week break. Because <laughs> I uh, I had forgotten... Like, it took me about a couple of minutes to sort of work out what I was doing again. Um, the thing on top of that was, we were talking about it last week... Uh, uh, Ancestors is like an evolution game where you play as a monkey and you're trying to evolve quicker than I guess real life um, and it's sort of like a, a, a Minecraft style game where there's tons and tons of things in the world you can go out and do and you can make objects and sort of teach uh, you, you're, you're learning as, a, as an ape a monkey to try and get smarter um and we were talking last week about how you evolved and did all this sort of stuff. So I jumped in and figured out how to do that. And it, it advanced me thousands and thousands of years, like hundreds of thousands of years forward in time. Uh, 
And then after that was done, it had me in a new starting area or a different yep. starting area. Or like I wasn't in my cave anymore. Yep. I, was in a, I was at a tree. Mm. Um, there was no more cave above me. And so it was raining, of course. Of course. And I'd forgotten like what I needed to eat to make it so that I had a resistance against cold weather. Sure. Uh, on top of that, my gorilla that I was using had gotten really old and its stamina bar was not as big as what it was. And so I had to go find um, another... Well, 10,000 years have passed, so... Yeah, technically. That's, that's pretty old. <laughs> another, um, so I had to find another gorilla to use, another monkey. Yep. Monkey, um, yep. And then I walked around my camp and I couldn't find any babies. Mm. And the boy that you level up in the game is by having a baby on your back and you walk around and do things and that's how you get experience. Mm. And so I didn't know how to make babies. Yep. How do I sex? <laughs> yeah. Luke asked. How do I sex? Um, show, show Bob. Um, Cause yeah. I figured out how to groom. I was like, oh, I need a mate. And I, like, you need to groom a, a partner. Yeah. And then you, you become a couple and I'm like, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. So you Cause I went to the down. help options and there's nothing in the help. Like it doesn't tell you what you need to do. I'm like, do I need to make a bed or something? And eventually, that yeah. was what I need to do. But that's what it is. Man, it's just so like those monkeys, they're classy broads, eh? <laughs> they are. They're not. They're not going to pound town just anywhere. Okay, they're not about to fuck like animals. Uh, they need a bed, right? If you want to evolve, you need to yeah, find a make a fucking bed. Treat her like a princess. Um, right. And then, yeah. so you know what happened after that? I uh, eventually the baby was born, and I was like, "Sweet, I have my uh, my baby now. I can earn experience." Yep. I started eating berries and whatnot. Nice. I left my I left my camp. I was yep. walking around, and I immediately got attacked by a lion. Go. I was like, "This is why I uh, didn't like the game." That's what I you just get. Re I remembered. Yeah, I was like, "Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to like. What am I supposed to do?" Every time yep. I fucking go anywhere, I get attacked by something, or it's raining. That's and it. So yeah, that's the um, that's the life you lead as a monkey. Um, I said this oh, on Twitter. Sorry. I am. Oh, okay. No, no. I was just gonna add to that. On top of that, when you evolve, you lose all your learning, like everything you've learned. Oh yeah. And you can keep two attributes to. Well, I guess it depends on how many babies you've you've got or something like that. Um, oh. And so you can keep two. And then it evolves you and you lose everything. Yep. And so you've got to relearn the whole thing again. And so oh, I'm yeah. at a point of the game where I'm just like, I don't even think I want to play it anymore. I played it for like 10 minutes. It's like, I was so keen to keep playing this game. <laughs> you kicked me in the nuts and I'm like, I don't want to play anymore. Like I'm back to square one. It's not like I fucking died or anything, but I just don't know. I don't understand the point of the game. I don't understand the purpose. What am I supposed to be doing? I don't know, like, no more monkeying. Uh, yeah, this, I said this on Twitter. I cannot believe nobody, nobody used the subheader, I'm tired of monkeying around on their review. And it's a real big indicator as to why I should be allowed to review more because high quality Jungle Book references when you're playing as a monkey, I cannot believe. I had that one locked in the moment I heard the game was announced, right? Like... Uh, it was either that or I want to be like you, right? Like, you've got choices there. If it's good, I want to be like you. If it's bad, I'm tired of monkeying around. It's like, people aren't, they're not fucking enough steps ahead, right? That's what makes me the best. Um, but no, I, I jumped back in uh, to see if uh, I could, see if the train wreck had me locked in. If I could look away from the train wreck. Uh, finally decided to go and solve the question of how the fuck do I, I stop being afraid of everything all the time? Um, whenever I get a, go, try to go to the meteor, uh, how do I stop being afraid of shit? Uh, got attacked by like six boars on the way, six different boars. Uh, saw a boar attack a snake. I don't know. Um, yeah, the boar and snake had a fight uh, and got to the, yeah, the fear part uh and was just sort of standing there the whole time like apparently there's i'm just fucking terrified i'm like 
yeah, go back into the menu and I'm reading the thing. It's like the white circle will fill up and I can see the white circle on the screen. Uh, oh, well, this big white ball. And I'm like at the white ball. And I'm like, I don't understand. Uh, and it's like, keep, keep like looking, keep identifying things. And eventually you will have solved your fear. And I'm like identifying shit and the white ball isn't filling up at all. And I'm like, I got no idea. And it turns out that, that was not the white ball I was supposed to be looking at. It was a white circle down in the bottom left. But because the game explains things so fucking poorly, I had no idea that the white circle and the white ball were two different things. But when this white circle filled up, another white ball appeared. And I had to go over to that fucking white ball. And then I could conquer my fear. And yeah, I had to look that up online. Like I was at a fucking loss. I'm like... I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. Like, I've read the fucking help thing. I've looked at the fucking white ball. I'm standing on the fucking white ball. It's as full as it's going to get. I keep identifying shit and nothing happens. <laughs> I fucking give up. And I went and looked it up online and they're like, oh, this white circle. I'm like, fucking shitting me. Like, why would you have a white, a big white ball, right? If that's not the white ball you're supposed to be fucking, like, if, just ignore. Like, it doesn't, why does it exist? Why does that white ball exist at all, right? If it's just there to fucking confuse people. Because, like you said last week, they played this. The QA players played it with the fucking <laughs> developers in their fucking pocket. With no, fu oh, no, not that white ball. Just, look, that's the white circle you're going to fucking deal with. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Don't worry about it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we better write in the, the help section how fear works. Two sentences. Two sentences will fucking wrap this shit up. Don't worry about it. Doesn't matter if they're fucking not terribly clear. So uh, I did that. Got to the meteor, and a boa constrictor ate me, and I uninstalled the game. <laughs> it's gone. I have deleted it. Uh, because yeah, I'm like s sitting there like I had to like inspect the fucking meteor crash site. And yeah, then I yeah. had to pick up the fucking rock and then inspect the rock. And so I'm like standing there and I'm like, okay, fine. And then I pick up the rock and I'm like inspecting it. I'm holding down inspect. And then the fucking A button comes up. I'm like, what? Why? And I press A. And then like eventually it dawned on me. It was like the dodge A. I'm like, oh, fuck, dodge A. But, uh... I'd already taken too much damage hmm. uh, from being attacked by 16 boars on my way to the fucking meteor side. <laughs> so uh, when it hit me, I started bleeding. So I was like, I think it hit me in the neck or some shit. Anyway, hit me and I started bleeding. I dropped the meteor, which was fantastic. Uh, and I'm like, uh, I'm going to grab them. I grabbed the meteor and then I'm just going to fucking run. And I started to run. But uh, I was bleeding too much, and I just sort of, like, slowed to a crawl. And then the bow constrictor <laughs> got me. Like, no, fuck this game. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to get out of it. Like, I've got no idea what I'm ever going to get out of this fucking shit. I hate everything I'm doing in it. Like, I hate every moment of it. I hate fucking, like, making sticks. I hate the process of doing anything in it at all. Fuck it, I'm out. So, um, yeah. Gonzo. It's uninstalled. Um, yeah. I hate it. Yeah. I uh, I had the same sort of experience with that meteor, except I got attacked by boars. Right, more boars. Uh, yeah. And I think I died, and I don't know where the meteor went. Oh, What you're nice. supposed to do with it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. I'll never know. Uh, I'm pretty close to uninstalling it. As soon as I think I get to a space where I need room for a game, then it's yep. probably gone. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to jump back in. I um, I didn't need space. I just didn't want to be able to ever load it up again. Yeah. I wonder, I'm going to hide it from my Epic Game Store somehow. I, I'm gonna I jumped, I tried to look for some guides or something, it. like what I should right. be doing. And there's like, and there's not, wasn't a lot that I could find. Like IGN and that had a couple of things up there that, talked about what to do and i was like yeah i've done like all this stuff um i watched some i was watching twitch for a while some people running around and they 
like they, they seemed to be quite far in and they weren't really doing much different to what I was doing. So I was like, oh, just... that's because that's what you like. So yeah, I, after I found the guide on how to do fear, I like decided to read on a bit hmm. and that's it. That's what you do. Like every you learn stuff by repetition, right? Which makes sense in a edutainment sort of way. Everyone learns by repetition, right? But good lord, I don't want to stand there hitting fucking rocks on sticks for sixteen hours every fucking like life, right? <laughs> like, oh, I bet it. Like, oh, the big tip, like in big caps on this tip page, was. Make sure you drink until your drinking circle is green. Uh, it turns out I hadn't been drinking enough the whole time I'd been playing. You're supposed to sit there and drink for about 90 seconds. Like literally just stand there in the fucking water drinking for 90 seconds, right? Until you're full of water. Otherwise, you are literally killing yourself in that game. Like literally pissing away your health. Like, who thought that was a good idea? Who wants to fucking stand there drinking for fucking 80 fucking minutes? It's fucking... Oh, I just... I don't get it. Oh, my Lord. I don't understand how anyone fucking thinks... Oh, but it, not every game has to be fun. Yeah, but it has to have fucking some point. Right? Like, if I evolve... If I spend 10,000 years evolving... And I'm literally the same fucking monkey... So a slightly worse monkey at the end what the fuck was the point then right like why, where the fuck is any of this taking me fuck that game yeah. fuck ancestors and that's the thing is that <clears throat> you do this evolve thing you lose everything that you've learned except you can keep two attributes or two things you've learned what's the point in an evolve I don't understand what the point of evolving was what did it get me nothing I like I don't know I don't and know you... what it did and a new that, place to be at, I guess. I, I've got no idea. This, this screen, and I don't know if it's because I waited too long to evolve, but that screen, it was up for about four minutes, like calculating all this shit that I've done. Yeah. Like, popping up. And I'm like, all right. It's like, oh, you've discovered this thing 25,000 years plus. Uh, yeah. You know, you've done this other thing here. Uh, here's another 25,000 years plus you've you've earned. And, and it sort of shows you a meter of your progress in life compared to what's actually happened in real life like are you beating um yeah evolution uh and it's sort of like the the game is to try and outscore <laughs> like what's happened in life and i just don't like that's the objective that's what you're trying to do um but you evolve and then you lose everything and it just doesn't i don't know what i'm gaining out of doing that it's just really poorly everything's sort of poorly explained uh, as to why you should be doing all this stuff so yeah uh like i i wish it was better than it was because it seems like there's some really cool systems in there it's just not they're not fun to play and they just don't explain like what you're supposed to be doing properly um yeah all right so should we move on let's move on uh just quickly maybe dota underlords i don't know if you've played any of the new update i have have you i've played uh yeah a couple of games um yeah they've basically overhauled a, a couple of the systems one of them is the level five characters are now called like um like ace characters and they have an, a, an extra ability yep. that um when you synergize with your your team um yep. it gives them like an extra bonus now so um it's kind of an incentive to actually make you go for these characters now as opposed to re-rolling and trying to th get three star um characters of lower levels like a um like a level three three star or something like that now yeah. it's worth actually trying to grab one of these other ones and like oh okay not only does this character is five star it does a lot more damage it's got more health it's got these um two really good abilities but if you're synergizing with these other characters that it's supposed to work with then it's like here's an extra ability or an extra thing that it'll do with you as well um so that that's kind of one thing that they're trying to do and the other thing was they they changed the way that rolling works and the way like the probability of getting certain um level characters works to try and make it so that you've got more opportunity of getting those higher level characters as well 
Um, and then the third other big change was they added items into the game that are placeable on the actual game board. Um, and then yeah. just some general like tweaks and nerfs to certain characters and the way they behave. So um, yeah, interesting change. I haven't played it enough to see how it affects the meta mm-hmm. um, because I just haven't had the time and playing so much other stuff. But yeah, it seems like a decent like they're making some changes in there, some big changes. <laughs> So, first of all, they've already had to nerf Enigma because Enigma's ace ability made the Shaman synergy transfer to all all characters on your team. Right, so anytime you hit them, you had like a 17% chance to get chickens. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 10% chance, uh, but oh, okay. with 10 characters on the that. board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they've raised it to 17% now. And they've removed that synergy, uh, which means shamans are useless. Um, but yeah, they um, yeah you you had a ten percent chance, but with ten characters on the board, which is what you needed to reliably attain a fucking ace character, mm-hmm. um, it was essentially a hundred. Uh, like everyone was just a chicken constantly, and uh, it was it was pretty ridiculous. But it did actually make. Um, yeah, it, it was an interesting path to go down. I think they just saw that the win rate for Enigma was way too fucking high because it was very difficult to do anything about. Uh, you basically, unless you I think you had to go Warlock synergy with Disruptor um, to actually have a fucking hope. Cause they like ma- assassins and just hope you could create. No, no, because the assassins were like really fucked uh, from certain. They were. They don't have enough health to live through being a chicken for right. the fucking however many seconds uh, that it was taking. So, um, yeah, they were just getting fucked. Um, but no, Warlock Disruptor was able to um, do, like, create a lot of fucking lifesteal, a lot of um, his big fucking square thing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Able to shut that shit down. Uh, not bad. Uh, they nerfed that, and so Enigma is literally useless now. Uh, and yeah, everyone just got aims for warlocks, basically. Um, I was talking to Jung about this. I think they need to. So you're still seeing a lot of knights. You're still seeing shitloads of knights, and I think they actually need to nerf knights into the dirt. I think they need to nerf knights into the dirt to the point where they are unpickable and it needs to be it needs to stay that way for a patch or two uh basically just kill knights because the way they act at the moment which is a what is it like 15 percent bonus uh to physical damage and magical reduction magic reduction yeah uh is too strong early game and because underlords is very early game heavy uh like you can establish a strong economy by having a successful early game, there is way too much incentive to force knights. And as it is right now, it's just too, like, it's too disheartening to see players go up and and try to do another, oh, I guess, okay, well, they're doing knights again. Uh, Like, it's, they're literally forming bad habits in players. They're like literally forming bad habits in players. There is heavy incentive to actively go for knights uh, and not try anything else, which is obviously, uh, it's like toxic to the nature of the way the game is supposed to be played. Um, I just, I just get bored now. If I see, like, if I come up against Knights early, I'm like, well, I've lost this round. Uh, I've got, like, I know I've got a, I'm building towards a good team later on. Uh, I'm not, like, forcing anything uh, anymore. I'm just sort of building pieces based on the Holy Trinity. Uh, Trinity, uh, the, um, the damage DPS tank heals. Um, that's, basically what i i aim for now Mm -hmm. uh and uh but it doesn't fucking matter because i go up against knights and i just can't do enough damage to actually get through their magical resistance uh and they hit me too too hard 
Um, but like it's just tedious. It's a tedious fight. Um, the problem is right, and so if I next game I'll just force knights. Right, I force knights for I force four knights onto the board because that's all you need for two levels of synergy. I can power through and win up until like round fifteen when I'm at. 50 gold and I can just re-roll into whatever the fuck I want like why wouldn't I just do that why wouldn't everyone just do that right there's I know why I shouldn't do that because I can't stay knights and if I don't get the rolls then I can't switch hard enough right and knights won't win the game in the end usually unless like even even if you do I got a fucking three star dragon knight uh, the other day and he still got fucking belted by warlocks um yeah like at the end of the day knights isn't strong enough they have nerfed knights to the point where they aren't good enough to flat out win every game but they are still strong enough to get you a top two and so if you're if you're just trying to grind your way up the ranks Hmm. then you have every incentive to like it's it's not enough to not win right they have to make it so knights will lose they have to make it so knights will actively lose because otherwise, why not? Why not just go knights? Why not just do the things that you know will win over and over again until they fail you? And that is a bad habit. That is a specifically bad habit in a game like Underlords. So they have to kill the bad habit. And the only way to do it, kill knights. Anyway, that's my opinion uh, that will go uh, ignored because I'm just a lowly smuggler. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. I want to know. I know I'm right. Um, yeah, I think the problem with uh, the problem with win rate balancing, which is what it appears they're doing at the moment, is they're balancing based on win rates. Is that it doesn't take a broad enough view, right? Balancing knights so that they no longer appear in the top one all the time isn't broad enough when you need to balance for them to not appear in the top three all the time uh you need to that's what they need to do they need to look at how often knights will land in the top three and i think they will find that a knight's start like starting with knights will land a player in the top three more often than not because yeah at the end of the day underlords is simply about economy management and knights allows you to economy manage it like a motherfucker mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so what about the uh, new items what, what do you think of them oh um i kind of like some of them drive me bananas the fucking gravestone uh that makes Tinsta, yeah oh my lord that is a pain in the <laughs> fucking dick yeah. um Especially if you that like the other player has um, uh, fuck, what's his name? Um, the dude who clones himself, Ark Warden. Oh, Ark Warden. Oh my lord! <laughs> Just spawns two every single time. Like, fortunately, you're no longer terribly incentivized to go for Ark Warden unless you're going Bloodbound. But um, yeah, holy shit! Yeah, with the grave, uh, the tombstone. Yeah, it's heavy duty. The other thing is if you're assassins. And they put it in the middle of their fucking space and you jump on their back line and then it doesn't matter. Like, if you die, if they die, like, yeah. You're just handing them a bunch of fucking units. It is rough. I think it should make zombies out of your own units that die and not out of... Like, if if my units die and I've got a tombstone next to me, they should turn into zombies it should not turn fucking enemies into zombies that fight for you because it's yeah it's pretty rough like and also the other thing is it further incentivizes you to just go warlocks because warlocks don't fucking don't tend to move all that much uh they'll just sit in the back line and fucking zap you from afar so they don't get impacted by tombstones at all um the barricades are awesome if you're long range casting uh they're huge uh, but the interactions that certain characters have with them at the moment are weird. They don't I think seem to be working. Anything. They're uh, like they're, fixed. They put a patch out recently that fixed a bunch of weird they, things to them. They yeah. They, they they said they fixed them and they were still buggy. And the next 
patch. So I don't know if there's been a patch since then, but yeah, they're pretty buggy. Um, what else? The target dummy is awesome if you're uh, assassins, um, and if you're a if you've got the blob and you're casting, uh, chuck the target dummy close enough so that the AOE casters will attack the dummy instead and you are golden. Uh, it is a free win, uh, which is always pretty good. And I have gotten the healing thing once and I did not think it was that good. It's 20, 20 health per second, uh, I think. And it's fine uh, like when you get it around, I think like round 20, but by round 35, it's sort of just an annoyance. Sure. It, I, I just chuck it up the front. Uh, I just chucked it up the front, sorry. Uh, like a target dummy because they will still attack it. It doesn't taunt like the target dummy does, but yeah, it'll provide a couple of seconds of distraction, which is fine. It wasn't healing enough to really, yeah, make any difference. Um, but yeah, had some good games. Uh, I've been playing with a bunch of people who are way higher ranked than me, uh, far higher than Smuggler, like a bunch of bosses. And, uh, yeah, I like those games a lot more. People don't force stuff anywhere yeah, yeah. near as much. Um, so I'm sort of hard stuck in Smuggler at the moment because if I lose in the boss games, which makes sense because I'm not boss, um, I don't lose as much, but I still lose a fair fucking chunk. Um, so, yeah, I just keep fucking... I'll, I'll win some, I'll lose some, I'll move nowhere. Oh, that's, what, that's what it is. Yep. I just don't have. I just don't want to play on my own, basically. And so, if I'm not playing on my own, I'm playing at whatever rank everyone else is. I'd have to actively play a bunch of games at Smuggler to get out of Smuggler, I guess. And I just find it dumb. Maybe we should team up. Maybe are you, are you hard stuck Smuggler as well? I think I'm in Smuggler still. I haven't played for a while, ranked. Yeah. I think I was when I was playing. I think I was just playing bots or something like that. I was just checking out. Um. I think I'm still in Smuggler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Cool. I, but I think they're good changes. Or like, they're just throwing some weird shit out there. Um, I think it's, I think tomorrow. throwing weird shit out there is a good idea. Um, I want to get, I want the Underlords to come out. I want that shit to kick in already. I want to see what they're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, just quickly, I didn't put a game down here. Uh, okay. No, I didn't. Uh, Apex Legends. Um, mm. I played a bit of this yesterday. New patch dropped. I saw you online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is my. Uh, I'm going to test the internet and see. Yep. <laughs> how my packet loss is. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was fine. Um, <clears throat> how's the yes. uh, how how's the NA? Uh, how many wins did you get? Are they I didn't all get any wins? Oh no. But I got a. Yeah, it balls. Don't know if old Joe better carry the fucking wins. Oh, yeah, was, oh, how the worm has turned. I think all three games that I played, or four <laughs> games that I played, I was above a K damage, and like everybody else was like a hundred damage or something. And I'm like, cool, all right, fair enough. Maybe I should just play ranked. That's what it um, is. You need all your old pal Jobo to be doing two hundred damage. Yeah, so that's how you get the win. Um, so they've got a new like uh, timed event running at the moment, which is like shotguns and snipers. Um, I jumped in and played a game of that. I uh, I jumped in and played just some regular old Apex Legends, and they've got this event running um, where there's some sort of like warp gate thingy, the, the kind of that uh, the void the wraith uses. I guess it's a yep. void, um, yep. and if you drop into it in the map, it teleports you to a different location. Um, right. I haven't gone into it yet because sure. I don't know if you've seen the videos, but it's fucking nuts. Um, and I think this is a problem that the game's got is that they're adding these events or like weird things into the map. And because that's the new thing, like that's where everybody's going. Kind of like when they did yeah. Dane's um, gauntlet. Yep. It was like you dropped there and it, that first day was fucking hot. Like 80% of the map was dropped in there. Um, yeah, but also because they had it tied to uh, like a, uh, weekly challenges and things like that as well. So like, not only is like this is where people want to go to check out the new area, but it's tied to being able to progress in the weekly 
um, or the daily challenges. And so like everybody's going there. I think they, these are problems. Um, I don't, did you see these videos of like when they first dropped this patch and just what was going no. on? It's fucking no. nuts. Like yeah. literally the whole server is dropping in this one spot. Uh, <laughs> I think like it's a cool, like it's a cool idea, but it's just it's, not working in practice. We've been saying that's what they've been, like that's the sort of stuff they've been needing to do for fucking yonks. This sure. wacky, zany shit, right? The get people interested in different locations on the map, right? But I think it's more of a, they, they can't do one at a time. Like, it can't be like right. that. They, they can't just put in, like, here's a new location or here's some gimmicky thing that's going on. Like, it needs to be the the big, like, season patch that they did where it's, like, fucking everything's underwater now. and yep. uh, Well, not underwater, but, like, here's a bunch of different locations. I think by adding just one place every week or two, yeah. it's just forcing players to go to that spot, um, like a lot of them. And so you end up with these games where most of the server is dead within the first two minutes yeah and so you're yeah. running around not getting in fights and whatnot uh yeah if you get a chance go to reddit and just check out like some of these fights that are going people were just going octane um because this this void gate had put you into this room and all of a sudden there's like fucking 30 people there and so octanes were just throwing down their gas traps and people were just dying there's like a video of a dude getting like fucking Being 15 costed. kills yeah, yeah sorry caustic Yep. Um, putting his like Nox traps down. Yeah, it's just him getting um, gas kills, like yeah, so many gas kills, or well, just punching people because there's no weapons down there for people to fight with. All oh, right. Uh, well, not enough for that many people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's a. Hopefully, they learn after this one that maybe it's not, or at least they learn from these last two events they've done that maybe it's not a great way to do it this way. Right. Uh, but I like their thinking of putting like injecting new content into it um it's just that it's the map is too small and that when you've got a plane going or the the ship going over the top of the map and the majority of people going to that one location it ends up in a different style of game because most of those people are dead now yeah so anyway um i think they made a bunch of sort of like tweaks to weapons and things like that uh really small stuff but otherwise yeah I uh, had fun playing. It was it was a good time. Um, cool. So yeah, I don't nice. know if you've seen any of those changes, but no, it's still going. Cool. Uh, what else we got here? You've been playing some VR games. I have. I've been playing Blade and Sorcery. Uh, so this is a. It's been a uh, pretty popular for a little while. Uh, it's a physics based uh, like sword and magic game. Uh, Blade and Sorcery. It's very clever of you, Job, to just switch the two words. Um, <laughs> so I got into it because I saw a fucking video of a Star Wars mod. Oh. And uh, I'm like, yep, that's it. That's all I needed. That's enough for me. I'm in. Um, so I jumped it, uh, jumped in, got the mods that I needed to play it. And it's fucking nuts, man. Like, that's some shit. Uh it doesn't like there's no like star wars levels or anything but it does like spawn a bunch of people and they've all got lightsabers and you can get a lightsaber and you gotta turn the lightsaber on and off like you can turn the lightsaber on and off which is rad and um yeah you gotta go like you go get your lightsabers you go into the the game world and then yeah you, you kick off and uh yeah it's basically just like you've got a lightsaber and you can like parry and you can like stab people you can chop their heads off uh doesn't like it's still doing a lot of the um still like it's not a full conversion or anything it's just uh basically they've added lightsabers they've added the ability to like force choke and that's about it uh but that's not to take anything away from it it's just they haven't gone that far yet uh, it is a fucking bananas game, though. I mean, even without the fucking lightsabers and shit, the, the stuff you can do. Uh, I was... I definitely... I worked out that I would be all dark side. I'd be 1,000% Sith if I was in the Star Wars universe and I had Force powers because it's just too much fun. Holy shit. You are, like... Even without... Like, I couldn't get the fucking Force choke telekinesis shit to work for a little while uh, but even without it right i was able to like fucking disarm 
an enemy, right, and then grab them. And uh, I don't know if everyone is... I don't know if it's reading my height incorrectly or whatever, but I'm definitely taller than most of the people, uh, most of the characters that you find. And so you can, like, literally walk up to them and grab them by the fucking throat and then just lift them up. Like, not force grab, literally just regular old grab with the grab button. You grab them by the throat and you walk them over to a fucking, like spiky wall and just fucking shove them into the wall right and they'll obviously die or the other thing I, I i was doing is i would uh grab them and then i'd lift them up and then i'd turn my lightsaber off and then i'd put it in their stomach like just the fucking the hilt and then i'd turn it on and the fucking lightsaber would like shoot through them and then i'd lift them up on the fucking on the lightsaber and just fucking dump them on the ground uh, or you can like, you can Jedi jump where you jump pretty high. Right. Uh, so I would grab them, jump really high, and then just fucking throw them into the ground. Uh, what else? Uh, you teleporting? can like tell no, it's it's you gotta hold to move. All right. So okay. you don't teleport, move. You like walk around in the game. It's okay. not uh, the jumping actually makes me feel a little uh, motion queasy um because of the speed of it but the regular regular movement around the map is uh the right speed in my opinion to not make me want to fucking hurl um yeah so there's that what else is there oh yeah you can uh you can force grab like even when you can't force grab your enemies Mm. you can force grab the lightsabers and shit so uh, that's pretty rad. Uh, just like I uh, spent quite a lot of time. I got my fucking got my controllers and I like just fucking grab a fucking lightsaber from across the the way and then I'll like fling it on fucking Luke Skywalker style. And just fucking chop cunts. Or you leave it on and then you throw it away and then when the next person comes up to you, you grab it and it comes back to you and it just sort of slice through them which is sick i haven't really mastered the ability to like throw it out and then bring it back like spinning style with the old uh jedi academy trick uh, i haven't really mastered that but uh yeah can otherwise you, you can dual wield uh you can dual wield fucking darth more lightsabers uh it's 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 goofy uh but you can do it um what else you can like you can turn the so you Obviously, you regularly hold the fucking lightsaber so the blade is going up from your your hand, but you can, like, chuck it up in the air and grab it so it's, like, facing downwards if you want. Uh, Yeah, like, you turn it on and off at a whim um, so you can use that to sort of, like, fake your enemy out. Uh, uh, What else? When there's, when, like, the enemies will dual wield sometimes and uh, they're kind of tricky to deal with, I've found. Uh, most of most of my deaths come at the hands of dual wielders because uh, I guess I'm just not that good. Uh, you can slow down time, but I never use it. So uh, instead, I'll just sort of what I like to do is you've got force lightning, and uh, when they swing, you can lightning them, and that'll stun them. And then I'll just fucking stab them in the fucking head. Um, yeah, scavitate all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, once you get the force, uh, force grabbing stuff going on that, like the whole game changes again and suddenly you're just like fucking ragged on cunts all over the place. Just fucking <laughs> bleep, bleep. <laughs> throwing them into walls, throwing them up into the sky, throwing them up and trying to catch them on your lightsaber, um, or like baseball swing them into the, into fucking half, uh, all kinds of shit. I would absolutely be Sith 100% hmm. because yeah I'm just I just have way too much fun killing people with lightsabers and force powers it's, and if yeah if I was like in the Jedi universe man like imagine landing on fucking landing with a bunch of Gungans like how fast would you go ham killing <laughs> a bunch of Gungans the moment one of them talk, spoke you'd be like 
this is happening, motherfuckers. Like, let's go. Oh, I can't believe it. Yes, this is it. I can't believe I locked out. Right? I was, <laughs> I was afraid to be likable. But no, this is happening, baby. Yeah, there's always a bigger fish. I'm the bigger fish. Anyway, uh, good times. <laughs> um, and what else? I did the. I, I spent a little bit of time with the regular weapons as well, and uh, but with the force powers. Right. <laughs> You pick someone up and you grab a spear and you fucking throw the spear and it goes through them and stabs them into a fucking wall and they're just sort of like stuck against the wall and they don't die immediately. That shit's messed up. So then you like walk up with an axe and fucking lop their head off. It's wild. That game's fucking bananas. Uh, there's like it's it's just like waves. You're just killing waves yep. uh, of enemies at this point, but uh, it's still <clears throat> out of control. Yeah, it's still really good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. All right, uh, next up, uh, headphones. Yeah, let's talk about the Rig 700. Uh, so I'm wearing them right now. The Rig 700 HD, I think it's called. Uh, I should know better. I should know more about these things. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I've switched them. They're wi wireless headphones. Uh, obviously, uh, Rig is the Plantronics. Mm -hmm. brand um and yeah they're a good pair of headphones um so they're a little bit down from the 800 and what they're trying to do is make like a medium range set of headphones um so somewhere between the 800s and and their lower uh price range like the 400s and stuff but uh the trick with the 700s is obviously that they're fully wireless uh and uh lighter than the 800s um they do like all the stuff you would expect um uh, they do like 3d audio and all that kind of stuff uh but they got like a dongle thing so you got to plug a dongle dongle into your computer uh and it's not just a wireless receiver so i've got the uh, my other he headphones that i've currently replaced are the logitech g35s so the G35s have a USB dongle or mm -hmm. like Bluetooth receiver, right? Which makes sense. Um, they, the rigs aren't just that. They're also, um, I can't remember the fucking term for it, but it's also like the sound processing unit. So uh, the, the fucking, the Logitech ones are like fucking this big, right? They're literally just a Bluetooth receiver. Yeah. Uh, that That's obviously the receiver for my mouse, not for the headphones. But um, obviously that doesn't translate to audio, which is how 99% of people uh, get this fucking podcast. But anyway, it's tiny, right? It's the size of my fucking little fingernail, uh, which sure. I need to trim. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's the size of my fucking fingernail, and it, it's literally just there to receive Bluetooth signal. That's not what's going on with the rig. They're audio processing and stuff uh, through the dongle. Uh, so it's got optical out as well. So I think that's uh, a large portion of why it's able to do uh, more robust sound-related things uh, because uh, the Logitechs, are, they're doing it, all that stuff using software only while uh, they've sort of palmed a bunch of stuff. Uh, the rig has pumped a bunch of stuff off to the, the dongle itself. So they use that. Um, you're able to plug the, the PC version into the Xbox because uh, it uses the same, all the same technology and stuff. Uh, it's all like Windows based apparently, but you can't plug it into the PlayStation and have it work. Uh, the reason they do that is because they were saying that basically uh, what they need to do is overcome the predilection of the consoles to favor their um, controllers over the headphones because it creates lag, uh, sound lag. Mm -hmm. uh, because as it is, the consoles correctly uh, favor the controllers. They want as little lag as possible but it, yeah, it just naturally creates a situation where there's a bunch of lag in the sound uh, unless they add a dongle. So they added this dongle, but they have to be different ones for the PlayStation and the Xbox because right. of the propriety of the sound stuff or whatever the fuck that they use there. 
I uh, it was really mad off PC. Um, it's nice that I could use it on Xbox. Yeah. Uh, what I will say is that the fucking Bluetooth receiver on this thing is a thousand times better than my Logitech. Um, I could actually, I basically can't go more than five meters away from my uh, computer with the Logitechs on yeah. uh, without losing the signal. Um, they will like straight up just lose signal and I can't hear anything anymore. So all the times that I'd run off to the bathroom while we we're playing PUBG or whatever the fuck, mm. uh, I wouldn't be able to hear while I was in the bathroom. Uh, it's a terrifying fucking proposition to not be able to hear what's going on because you're... I am generally just concerned <laughs> that when I come back, I'll be dead. Uh, yeah. Uh, it only has to happen a couple of times before you're pretty convinced it's going to happen every time. Um, and it's definitely happened more than a couple of times to me. But uh, yeah, so... Yeah, you basically, you've got this like set of headphones, they, they last 12 hours. The only problem, like, not the only problem, my biggest problem is that they don't auto turn off. Uh, so, well, they don't seem to, I'm, I'm not sure if, I'm just like, if it's just extremely smart, but it has like a on message and an off message. And uh, I left them on overnight on overnight and I came back and uh, I didn't get an off like when I thought I had to turn them back on again it turned it off um, so I don't know if that's I don't know how the battery is going to go on that but it basically I think I need to turn it off when I'm not using it whereas the G35s will auto turn off if they don't detect any sound signal after a certain amount of time mm-hmm. which is bad if you leave, if like I leave them on and uh some sort of YouTube is playing in the like, or some fucking ad is playing on a website when I go away from my computer. Uh, but if I turn my computer off, the headphones will auto turn off and it saves a lot of battery. Um, so that's annoying. Compared to the 800s, apparently 800s have 24 hours. These have 12 hours. So far, right, I did leave them on all day, uh, all night last night. Uh, and when I, I, I charged them for about half an hour before this podcast, I'm mildly concerned that they're going to shit the pan- their pants at some point but when I turn them back on again they said the battery level was high so uh, fingers crossed that doesn't happen uh, they've been going pretty strong so far um, if I yeah the only other thing I don't really like about them, they're fucking light as fuck like compared to the fucking Logitechs I would say they're about like half the fucking half the weight which is insane right like the Logitechs are chunky fucking monkeys but yeah, these things, I mean, I guess that was the upside of the Brink 400s that we used to have as well. Like, mm-hmm. they're just fucking super light, um, which is awesome because it means you can wear them for longer without, you know, noticing that they exist. They've got really good passive fucking noise cancelling and stuff. Um, my least favorite thing about them from a uh, immediate perspective is the, the fucking scrolling the volume button hmm. is isn't like a very smooth fucking like scroll sure. and it doesn't like it's very you really got to fucking move that shit um and yeah it's pretty nitpicky but it doesn't like it makes it feel a little less premium i guess compared to the fucking g35s where which is really it's a really good scroll action uh that feels really good to do um right. they come with a fucking mic but mm-hmm. obviously i've already got a mic so i don't fucking need that shit yeah. and uh yeah so how do, you, how do you charge them oh with a like micro usb oh, okay. it's micro. yeah yeah. Um, yeah that's good yeah um so yeah from that like they're, they're just they're solid fucking headphones um mm-hmm. they have been really good sound wise so far uh, and yeah, I'm yet to, what I want to do is test them in something like uh, uh, Rainbow, maybe Rainbow Six. Rainbow is good, yeah. Rainbow would be a good one um, to, yeah, sort of just get a good idea of how the audio in it really works. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, do you know how much they are? No. 
I sure don't. Fucking good one, Joe. <laughs> You're on point. I'm yeah. fucking aware of this shit. Uh, maybe someone will know. JB Hi-Fi has a page for them. Price guarantee, 200 bucks. All right. All right. Uh, so to compare, I'm using the Astro A50s. Um, oh, yeah. Which uh, they have a charging dock. Yeah. Um, that can be a bit finicky to sort of get it on the right sort of where it needs to be sometimes. Yep. Um, so that that's one thing I don't like about them is that that dock can be just a pain. Like you think you've got it on there, you get you get up the next morning and you fucking your headphones haven't been charged. Um, the good thing is though that uh, you're talking about like not sure if they're on or off. If uh, they've got like a, um, I think they've got like a if they're tilted in a certain way, they automatically turn off. So if you put oh, them yeah. down on your your desk and they're yep. laying flat, then they'll just switch off automatically. Um, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, it's the same sort of functionality you're talking about. Like you can, I can use these on my consoles um, without any issues. Uh, yep. You can uh, set them up so they've got 3D stereo or 3d sound um so i use that for it's i think the game for me that's really noticeable is yeah rainbow six yes it's, it's really important to have depth in that game and it's really well done like you can tell when someone's above you or behind a wall and when things like the way the sound travels in that game is really good whereas in uh pub i turn them off because the sound engine in that game is terrible <laughs> so like yeah. it just depends on the game you're using um, yeah right yeah so maybe tinker around with that a bit but PUBG don't use it um, unless yeah. they fix the sound engine but I generally turn it, it off it's not, it's not great um, but most of the time like it, the batteries on these ones last me quite a while yeah so I can generally go an entire day and yep. they're fine um, and that's usually a, you know and if they're not fine then I'll chuck them on the charger for half an hour and I'll just switch headphones and they're, yeah. they're good to go again so yeah yeah um and they're a bit more expensive they range from like 450 yeah yeah uh, that's sure the thing it. right you're looking yeah. at twice the price yeah which is uh these like just having a squeeze at jb and these like the cheapest fucking wireless headphones yeah yeah i guess because the the thing that sort of jacks the price up as well is that like not not a lot of them are doing the dolby surround um, yeah there's a couple of them are starting to do it now yeah um, but they're just still generally pretty hefty in price so yeah that's good yeah yeah well, yeah i guess you get what you pay for i mean there was um didn't atmos require some sort of fucking crazy license fee or some shit when it first came out it still does i think it's really fucking jesus i think it Christ. still does yeah that's wild that is amazing. Uh, yeah sorry these ones are dolby atmos uh, yeah yeah i don't know what the difference is right for some reason i just opened a pack of mentos and i was like i'm gonna have one but that's a it's a bad idea yeah that would be, <laughs> like that would be odd podcasting would be an odd choice yeah so now i'm like trying to jam it back into the packet <laughs> which is good um all right what else we got here a couple more games uh dark uh, pictures man and madame man and madame man and madame man and madame talk about man and madame i'm gonna whiz yeah you, you talked about this one last week um which is the <clears throat> sort of the follow-up or successor to until dawn which was a game we really liked um this one is published by namco bandai or bandai namco whichever way you want to say it um so it's not a sony game in particular but it's by by uh super giant super giant super massive one of those two uh let me check man of madame super massive games um super massive yeah and it's a it's a like a horror sort of anthology series that they're kind of doing um you had some criticisms last week about sort of the style of it like it it's uh until dawn was these you were following these teenage kids around that went to a cabin in the woods and uh it really fit that sort of the writing that they were going for um and sort of the vibe Whereas this one is following some teenage, not really teenagers, more like college kids, right? Both of them were sort of like college kids, um, or late, late, late high school yeah. kids. Um, this is very similar as well. Like it's following some 
uh, some older or some adults that uh, are on a boat and something goes wrong and yeah you kind of choose your own adventure your way out of it by switching between characters and sort of role playing your way through the game um i don't you talked about how last week you played it with your wife um yeah. but the way that you played it was she like she would make decisions but you would control the game yeah um so i played it by uh i think it's called movie night in the game the way oh, yeah. movie night works is it's like a pass the controller um you select what character you want to be or how many people you want to play with um it's up to i think there's five characters within the game mm-hmm. um you basically uh you know you say how many people are going to be playing and then they all choose a character and anytime that character is uh in the game to interact with or to move around the environment with that's when you pass the controller along and they can kind of make decisions and progress the story um and it's sort of supposed to be like a uh, like a film, but with some interactivity and like you choose your own adventure t- style. Um, you know, decisions sort of affect the way the story plays out. Uh, so the problem with that I've got with this particular mode is it seems too difficult um, for a movie night, like what they're considered calling a movie night experience. Yeah. Like if you were to get a bunch of friends around mm. and be like all right we're gonna set up this movie night thing um and we're gonna try and play it i feel like a lot of them wouldn't have much fun or they wouldn't enjoy it the interactivity yeah. part of it um because the quick time events in it are fucking brutal yeah I'm, i've been struggling on some of them um and there there's not a way to s- change it or like to tweak it a little bit there there's an option in the menu um, to disable like the time limit on I guess the timeout on quick time events but that's single right. player only so only if you're playing oh. by yourself uh, which is strange because in a movie night setting you feel like there'd be more people I mean there's more of a chance of you just like hey getting a bunch of friends around people that don't know yeah. how to play video games like it's that type of thing where it's um, uh, jackbox party pad or something like where you get people around that haven't don't really play video games or or mm. not as like hardcore into video games and you can still have fun and play them with play games with them this is sort of like that but they haven't thought about that audience at all they like completely miss that yeah um, and so they treat it as in like you're gonna have the fucking reflexes and know exactly what button to press in a split second and if you don't do that bad shit's gonna happen um and so yeah that, i just watching my wife play it like she plays video games and she can she struggles sometimes to hit those quick time events yeah Um, like i've had situations where i've struggled to quickly press the right button or i've just hit it right at the right time and fucking some of them are really quick like it seems a lot quicker than what it was oh it's it's definitely definitely quicker yeah um and so the problem there becomes is like now we've had characters die and so she's down to playing one character and i've now got three still (laughs) <laughs> and it's like <laughs> all right well so she's not in as enjoying the gameplay aspect as much because uh, like getting frustrated with just being punished for the game being difficult for no reason other than to yeah um like at a point it stops becoming a choose your own adventure and you're just having characters die because you weren't quick enough you know what i mean yeah. like you haven't yeah. made bad choices you've just you weren't your reactions were too slow or you didn't know what button to press because you don't play console games as much as someone else or maybe you play on an xbox and they play on a playstation generally and so the button names are different well but it also like it also positions it as a failure state as well like it actually specifically like pits Mm. her reactions against yours because uh you like you're actively having people stay alive or die based on those reaction times based on that success or failure which is inherently worse like it's inherently worse because now yeah she's less incentivized to play because she's going to have less play time so she's spending more and more time just watching and like she's less involved in in the actions like they have literally 
separated her engagement with the game into the life and death of those characters. Whereas like playing it my way uh, means that we're both pretty invested uh, or fairly invested in what happens or what goes down because we're both like as invested as we ever were. Like if anyone sure. dies, then they like they die for the, the team. The team loses that as opposed to the individual character, which yeah is why yeah I thought part, um, movie night mode was a mistake in general. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and um, so we start. I started playing it differently at the start of the game to where I'm at now. We were kind of playing it as like the correct way to play it, or like how would you make like making the right choices as opposed to what are interesting choices, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so, like, there were situations where there'd be two characters, for instance, um, trying to barricade a door, and one of them my choice was to keep barricading the door or just fucking run and so one of my characters was trying to barricade the door and the other character was my wife's character and so i just left her character there and just fucking bailed and so like those are the interesting choices right um because i've screwed over her character but yeah. and then like what that kind of leads to and and things can kind of happen in terms of that story um which are inter more interesting than just trying to play it as in like, I'm going to try and make everyone survive and making correct decisions. Uh, but then at the end of the day, like that decision, uh, like I don't know how it would turn out the other way, but yeah, all of a sudden, maybe later on down the track, she's got to make, you know, she's being chased by somebody and she's got to quickly press the right, you know, seven buttons in the correct order at the fucking split second. And if she doesn't, then her character dies. And it's like, that's not fun yeah <laughs> like you've rather than yeah making it be about a choice or making a wrong choice you've come down to how good are you at a game how like yeah. split second reactions and that's not yeah i think it's a mistake uh so on top of that i think the um story is nowhere near as good as the last game yeah um it feels like very that's what i was saying last it week it feels too. very um I guess it feels like you're running down corridors, which is kind of fitting because you're on a fucking boat. And so you are literally running down corridors for a lot of it. And it can be very hard to sort of uh, navigate these corridors, like trying to figure out where you're supposed to go next. Like it, like the camera will show you down this hallway and mm -hmm. you don't know if you're supposed to go at the end, like left or right, or all of a sudden your guy's kind of just standing at a wall and like, oh, that's not the door. Okay, so you turn around and go through the other direction um so i think the camera angles are a bit funny it's it's like it looks really pretty in some instances like it's a good looking game in some spots and then other spots you're like oh lady don't smile like <laughs> your, your face looks yep. horrendous um it's got that like uncanny valley oh, look yeah. about some of those characters and other times you're like that's a really good shot the game looks impressive um i like how they sort of they do weird things with um like the environment and showing you like you'll see something for a split second and you'd be like did, did you see that like was that something in the corner over there and they'll be like no i didn't see anything and you can like yeah anyway but like that seems to happen a lot where you'll see something really briefly for a second like a character someone standing in a fucking corner and the camera will just like pan away from it because you've you've moved over to the next screen um so i like that it does like that sort of stuff it's really cool um, like it, it sort of rewards you to pay attention and um, like in a movie night setting that sort of like that sort of stuff is really fascinating to you know see how many people actually spotted that um, yeah man, and just like some of the the way it's telling the story um, it does things like you'll go through an area and um, you know you'll be interacting with characters but they're not really there or like you'll it'll loop back on itself and it sort of replays over and over and things sort of change as you progress through these levels um so that's the, that like that stuff i'm really enjoying but the overall story like it hasn't grabbed me as much it yeah. does this um this uh like narrator guy that sort of breaks up all the chapters i don't think it's anywhere near as good as what was in the last game in an until dawn yeah um where uh i like i don't feel like this guy's adding anything to it yeah, yeah whereas 
Peter Stormare was like a really cool character. It was yeah. asking you questions in that. Those you know, it's leading like, to stuff, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It was it like whereas I don't feel like this is leading to anything. No. Yeah. Um, the other it thing sort of feels I, like they feel like they have to do that kind of stuff now, or whatever. Yeah, it would, like it would have been cool to have him come back, <laughs> like just get right? him back. But at the end of the day, I don't think this is. This is obviously not a Sony. Like Until Dawn could be a Sony product for all we know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. But the other it's thing exactly. I'm not a fan of is the. Um, it, it, until dawn had these moments in the game where you could find these items and it would sort of give you a look into the future in order to save yourself like don't make the wrong decision yep. in this game it does something similar where you're finding um like paintings yep. i don't know what the fuck any of these paintings mean most of the time yeah 100 like, percent of the time i don't know what it's trying to tell me it's normally about two three seconds long and i there's not like there's not enough in them to actually give you any indicator it's literally just showing you how you will die Could die yeah like will probably die to like after you have passed the point of no return anyway like this yeah. it doesn't show you the the trigger action that will cause you to die it shows you you dying yeah it's it's does, not does helpful it, but does it show you dying or is it showing you a way to survive uh i thought it was showing you dying okay fair enough i like because I, I just couldn't get a idea of what it was showing you exactly mm. or whether or not it was telling you to do this or something else um but yeah anyway um so like i'm i'm definitely mediocre on this game so far uh, i'm interested to see sort of what the how the story sort of pans out um but otherwise yeah it's i don't think it's anywhere near as good as until dawn at this stage yeah yeah 100 percent right um, all right, telling lies. Oh, speaking of games that aren't as good as its predecessor. <laughs> uh, no, nah, telling lies is awesome. Uh, it wasn't as good as her story by any by any measure, but um, it is still fantastic. I'm so glad I played it. Uh, so glad I experienced it. Um, I played it with my wife again. All right. Um, that's a long session. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, we played it over two sessions, uh, but yeah, two six-hour sessions. Um, yeah, so basically, first things first, uh, I managed to get the Steam Link app on my uh, TV working, uh, which was fantastic. So that was a good heads up, JB. Um, basically, my Samsung TV has a fucking app on it, the Steam Link. Yeah, and huh. that's all I needed to play games on my fucking TV from my computer. Uh, computer's doing all the fucking hard work. TV is just displaying shit. It's playing over wireless, so I probably wouldn't play any fucking Twitch shooters on it, but uh, yeah, I can use, like, when bought a new fucking keyboard, like wireless keyboard and mouse combo, um, because I lost the, lost a bunch of buttons on my old one. Hmm. And one of those buttons in particular was the right arrow button, uh, sure. which is, sort of important in telling lies uh first thing i did after playing with my wife for about 15 minutes was i went and downloaded that mod you were talking about <laughs> to make scrolling back to the start of a fucking video less of a ball lake because good god what a fucking nightmare um yeah i don't understand why they wouldn't include it i understand wanting people to play in a certain way but uh yeah Jesus Christ, they, yeah. There's no way that that's the appropriate way to fucking play shit. Uh, especially a couple of those, a couple of the things we landed on absolutely uh, put us uh, like fucking whoosh, at the end of the right, video, at, yeah. right at the end of the video. Yeah. And you're like, uh, well, okay, well, that, was, that would be pointless. Anyway, uh, fantastic acting. Like, constantly amazed at how good the acting was considering how long some of those takes were uh the little girl in it is fucking spectacular she does an awesome job um yeah so that's like that was awesome uh, yeah logan marshall green we went we watched upgrade uh which is that um lee one l film starring logan marshall green afterwards get get a bit more martial green action uh <laughs> and then you watch the invitation i think he was in the invitation right he was in that yeah, yeah uh no spider-man <laughs> fucking i'll tell you what 
Upgrade is way gorier than I remember it being. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. Some of the shit that happens in that film. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Uh, no, telling lies. Yeah. I think my biggest problem with it is that it didn't really set goals very well. It didn't really set my goals super well. And so I was sort of just sort of like left to do stuff. Like it sort of just like went, okay, well, here you go. Like do, do what, do what you can, I guess. Um, see how you go. Uh, it didn't really tell me what I was trying to find. It didn't tell me like what I was chasing down in particular. It didn't set a fucking end state for me. And I understand having finished it now that it was deliberately not trying to do that. But when we were about 60% of the way through the game, uh, we were pretty close to stopping. We were pretty close to like giving up. Not because we'd hit a wall, but mostly because we didn't know, like we'd sort of found out. My wife was pretty satisfied with the information we'd found. Yeah. Right, like we found a storyline that seems pretty fairly comprehensive, uh, and we had a decent idea of where it had gone, uh, and we were fine with what we'd found. Right, we weren't. Right. Uh, there wasn't because there was no end goal because there was no like find out what happened on this day, November twenty eighteen. Yeah. Right. Like the last game, which was like a sort of like a murder mystery type thing. Like, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Because it didn't set that right. Uh, we were like, okay, well, I guess it ends at April 20, 2018, right? Like, I guess it must end around there. And then it was only because uh, my wife was doing. I was I was doing the typing and stuff, and my wife was doing all the fucking writing and stuff, um, like all the note taking and stuff. Um, because of that. Uh, basically we were like about to finish about to wrap it up and I was like was there, was there any words like any keywords that you really wanted me to search that we didn't search and she said one and obviously I won't say it but uh, she said one and uh, it was like a uh, whole new game that <laughs> opens up and nothing yeah, <laughs> holy shit uh, like this fucking, we thought we'd been all the way down this rabbit hole and we had no idea how were deep Were you not it taking notes? Went. Yeah, we, yeah, we're taking notes. Uh, okay. we took a bunch of notes, which is why we were able to, I think in our, by our measure, like solve the story to the extent that we did. Right. But, um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, this one, this one keyword basically added 40 percent to the game um yeah i think the lack of actual direction is probably my biggest criticism of telling lies mm -hmm. uh and it seems like it wants you to like i believe we got we watched 70 percent of the videos because it does a report at the end of the like once you once the credits are all uh it'll you can go to your report and you can find out how much you you'd seen of and yeah i think we did 70 percent of the videos um we focused on, uh, I can't remember her name now, the um, the music girl. Hmm. Focused on her, our motivations were apparently political, uh, and yeah. Um, I don't know that we uncovered everything. Um, I'm not interested in playing through the game again to find what we missed necessarily. Sure. But I am interested in watching like a YouTube video or some shit to find out what we missed. You know? yeah. I feel like it's the type of game where um, it's it's not like a horror story where there's a definitive end and like uh, yeah. you've solved the mystery. This is more like a story that's been broken up into sort of like three storylines um, yeah. between all these characters. And once you get to sort of the the and like so what's what's considered the end video then you get an idea of the entire arc yeah. of it there's no like ah oh, revelation that that's kind of what it was leading up to it's just telling you this entire movie that's split up into sections yeah i don't think yeah um so i don't think going back is going to really f like 
give you more of an idea of like it's just going to fill in bits and pieces like small bits yeah in, filling like, tiny gaps these characters yeah yeah um i didn't really do much with the chick from westworld at all i didn't find like i didn't see what the point of her storyline really was okay. um in the grander scheme of things um obviously later on uh yeah. it made a little bit more sense but yeah like ultimately i don't think she added that much and I didn't really understand why uh, Logan Marshall Green's character had the relationship that he did with her. Um, right, okay. What else? Uh, yeah, that's a bit like... Uh, it's it's obviously tricky to talk about without spoiling shit. Yeah, I don't I mean, want to spoil shit. The whole thing is a story. Like. Yeah, it is one <laughs> massive story. Uh, I do think it's absolutely worth playing. It isn't as good as her story, but it is still great. Um, so, I, yeah, I think... Everyone should check it out 100%. Um, and I'm glad I played it. And my wife absolutely fucking loved it. She wants to like, she wants to go back in and play it. Uh, but because we're playing through Steam Link, she can't play it without taking over my entire fucking computer. So uh, mm. I won't allow that. Is it not uh, on... Um, I guess you have to buy it again, right? I thought it was on iOS or something like that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's a, it's a great game, yeah needed yeah better direction i think like a better fucking i just her story really set goals way better yeah. i think it's just because it's it's her story's trying to tell a specific story yeah and this one is is more like it, it was narrative. like a yeah it's just like a narrative thing or it's you're just filling in the blanks um yeah. and i think if they did like a you know like a Shyamalan style thing like that like ah oh, there's a big twist at the end then yeah that could sort of elevate sort of what it was trying to do but i don't that's yeah. not what they were trying to do they were trying to um a bunch of really talented actors together to try and tell a portray a movie uh, like a long form movie in a, a different way um what would you think of like the sort of the um interactions between the characters and like watching one video and then like finding the other half of that later on like uh oh i almost always immediately tri like attempted to find the other half like immediately uh tried to find the other half even if i was halfway down a specific thread i'd right. if i found one half of the video i'd always try to find the other one um we would search i, I thought they did a spectacular job of giving you ways to find those those ones the only one that i thought was really tricky and really well done was i didn't find the second half of the first video until we we're about 80 percent of the way through the fucking game uh so the first video that you watch which yeah. I, obviously there are five videos that you can watch at the start but uh if you start from the left uh, which i think is the logical place to start um, yeah, I didn't find the other half of that one for fucking yonks. I don't uh, remember. <laughs> I have to go back and I have to go back yeah. and look. But uh, yeah, it was pretty like that was that was pretty cool when we when we stumbled across that one. Um, that was pretty rad, and uh, yeah, I think that was actually what led us to. It might have even been the the, the like the trigger that and ended the game for us like it led to all of the pieces falling into place uh for us to get to the final end state of the game but yeah. uh yeah do you find the uh the fairy tale um the conversations with the daughter yeah yeah that were good that were good yeah Did, they didn't like they weren't seeding information were they yeah were they yeah, some of them like he would change the names of the characters or like oh, different that, yeah. names and like, and yeah. then that would kind of fill in the blanks to other characters of like, True. like if you, that actual story reoccurs a couple of times as well and he tells it in different ways, um, which is yeah, it's cool to see that sort of unfold uh, over the course of you know, I, this this story takes place over the course of a couple of years, yeah, um, and to see how that kind of evolves, yeah, is interesting. Anyway, yeah, I really liked it. I, I, yeah, I think it's um, it just sort of does more of the same with her story, but it's trying to tell a, a different, a different story. I, I don't think that um, 
I, like, I just don't understand why there's no play video from the beginning or <laughs> yeah. I'd like to hear his thoughts on that like why that wasn't in there from the start I'd love to know yeah yeah anyway it's good I think people should check it out it's, it's, if you like to her story it's good 100% yeah yep alright is this the last one Gears 5 last game yes Gears 5 uh I like this game eh uh, Gears 5 is the fifth game in the Gears of War story the, uh, or series. They've, they've dropped the Of War portion. Now they're just Gears. Um, Are you including Judgment? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess maybe I'm not. Eh? Um, <laughs> am I supposed to? I don't know. I've, I've, I, I switched off on the Gears ser- uh, series at 3. Uh, I just don't think... They have done so little to evolve that series... Uh, over time that it was it, it just started to be uninteresting to me but being the sucker for co-op games that i am i still got involved if i can play a shooter with friends i'll still play it even if i'm not interested in what's going on because mm-hmm. uh, i'm still playing with friends right at the end of the day i don't want to fucking retread the same ground we've done a billion times but uh yeah at the end of the day games of games with friends are better regardless of the game and yeah uh, I want to play Gears 5 with Nate check it out see how it went um, we had fun uh, but I don't like what they're doing with it it is still it's just more of the same it is literally more Gears of War and I don't understand like how that's enough for people because I feel like games themselves have evolved so far beyond there's still forced walking segments. How the fuck? It's 2019 and I'm still being forced to walk and talk to someone. That is fucking staggering. Like, absolutely staggering. I get that it's fucking buying time to load shit or whatever the fuck, but I don't give a... F- I don't give a fuck, right? Like, that's insane. Just let me fucking play the goddamn game at my own pace. Stop literally ruining the pacing of your own fucking game by forcing me to drag myself through treacle every fucking 30 minutes or so it's Mm. stupid as fuck um there's that there are a number of fucking high octane superb action sequences that occur in cutscenes instead of letting me fucking play them which is (laughs) staggering it's a fucking kick of the crotch is what it is because Oh, yeah, well, yeah, no, that's fucking epic. Like, that was fucking epic. I, I'm glad I didn't have to do it myself. God forbid I have the fun myself in this video game. Ooh. Like, yeah, that's fucking crazy. Like, how? How? Didn't Hitman teach us enough about making, or Assassin's Creed 3? Like, haven't we learnt that you're not supposed to be fucking taking away control of the fun shit from the player let the yeah. player do the fun shit i mean in, in uh, games have done it you look at um like god of war or even spider-man like these big giant action set pieces i mean most of the time they are tied to a quick time event but other times they'll have you actually pressing buttons and do at least you're interacting with it you feel like you're engaging in this this set piece yeah 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 that's not the case here like yeah they they raise the stakes they really like work hard to raise the stakes uh, and they're like oh well how are you going to get out of this one and then you put the fucking controller down because you don't need to get out of this one he's going to get out of it in a fucking cutscene um yeah it's brought like it's bigger it's a lot bigger than what I've played before in a Gears game like there's a lot more space to move around in and like there's some hub shit and some side missions but I don't give a fuck about any of that shit because it doesn't lead to anything necessarily interesting in my opinion it doesn't lead anywhere like meaningful it's sort of just doing it because it's like well games have hubs and side quests now like gotta do that shit but like who gives a fuck uh, whatever uh, the the guns are good like I can't I can't fucking 
the best thing about the Gears games has always been that they've done really good guns, and there are some fucking crackers. There's the Retro Lancer in this, which uh, is like, a, you know, the chainsaw gun, but it has a fucking knife sword on the end instead of a fucking chainsaw. That's fucking sick. I love using that thing. I will ditch the chainsaw for the Retro every single fucking time. Mm. Uh, there's a Grenade Launcher Lancer that fires the grenades up in the air and they come back down. Um, there's like a lot of high octane shit that just sort of like feels like you're causing massive destruction, swaths of destruction all over the fucking place, which is awesome. Uh, I'm about it, right? Like that, and in a co op shooter, when you're playing with a bud, that's fucking fantastic. It's all the times when it rests control away from you to do something, make you walk somewhere make you watch a cutscene that you don't give a fuck about like all this kind of shit that it's doing that I think is really hurting uh, my enjoyment of the game because instead of looking forward to the next big set piece I feel like I'm doing the boring shit and then the game does all the, f the really fun stuff right like me and Nate we'll shoot all the grunts and then the big shit will get killed in a fucking cutscene I think that's fucking idiotic uh, it's such a huge error. Yeah, which, ugh, like, yikes! Mm. Let me do the fun shit. Um, haven't managed to play any of the other um modes yet, which is a bummer, right? Like, I want to play the other modes and check them out. I want to play this fucking uh this new three player mode where you're always on the run and stuff that looks fucking sick and it seems like a real strong trend for games uh, in 2019 uh, that can't don't have the manpower to do a fucking battle royale mode because it seems pretty similar to what Rainbow is aiming for with the infection mode or whatever the fuck it's called mm. um, yeah that sort of three player moving horde mode I love, I love the idea of it uh, because it's been a long time since we've had a fucking Left 4 Dead and it's staggering to me I keep saying staggering I'm going to stop saying staggering I'm going to say fucking it's fucking to me that uh, we don't get more fucking Left 4 Dead like how have how have we not had a bunch of Left 4 Dead clones that's yeah. weird well the, like, the um, yeah the, the moving horde mode that was something in the division um, they had that that mode that they introduced during one of the DLCs, and I talked right. about it. With the, like, you would open gates up, like you'd spend points yeah. to open the gates, and like it'd move you through. I don't know that's yeah. similar to what you're talking yeah, about, but it's the sounds... zombie style thing, right? Yeah. Like, um, COD zombie style stuff. Yeah, shit. there was a game we played recently. I, I, actually, I don't think you played it. Um, uh, it was like the Indiana Jones zombie game. Yeah, yeah, like, I remember the one you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it's made called. by Rebellion. Yeah, uh, which was like a left for dead, but you'd move like you you do sort of areas and then like progress through to the next section and, and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, is it, is it because you haven't played it because it's not ready yet? Like it's not up yet, or no? We're waiting for a third player. Oh, um, well, I can jump in tomorrow. <laughs> excellent. Uh, that's what we're waiting on. Where um. Yeah, there's there's general horde mode as well. There's like PvP. I couldn't play that obviously. There's the, there weren't the players yet. Um, yeah. So we've basically just been doing the the co-op stuff, and it just hasn't like the campaign stuff. I just don't like the campaign. Mm. I don't like any of the characters. I don't don't really think that much of the voice acting. Just not that interested in what's doing basically. Um, it's all the stuff around uh, outside of that rigid linear shooter bullshit. And I know it's not super linear anymore. It's semi-linear though. And yeah, I just don't, don't care for it really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. My other question is when Sony gave you a bunch of money, was it in bags or was it <laughs> like a... Uh... <laughs> it was a wire transfer, obviously. Um <laughs> I saw someone describe this as this year's as Microsoft's God of War, as good as God of War. Hmm. That is the fucking highest shit I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> uh, good God, did we play different fucking games? Because oh, that's insane. That is insane. Yeah. Let me tell you about ancestors. 
<laughs> yeah, you want a you want a real fucking game of the year? Ancestors, baby. Uh, you sent yeah. me a good one. Um, it was a Metacritic <laughs> blurb. It was so good. It was so good. It was well written. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, now I'm gonna see it. Now I'm gonna see it again. Uh, PC Games N. Familiar, solid cover shooting with the occasional surprise. It's fitting the coalition has opted to simply call the latest game Gears because mostly it's just going through the motions. Oh, oh that is <laughs> juicy. That is some shit. That's well done. Well played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, anyway. Um, I'm not going to say don't get Gears 5, but uh, yeah, you have to be a real Gears fan to be in on, on on it I think uh, you'd have to be really invested in the story because it is continuing that storyline uh, but that said that uh, we'll see how we go with um, the, the other modes because I have a lot of faith that they should be pretty interesting and uh, yeah we'll come back to you next week see how we go with that yep nice. alright uh, we should roll in some news we got Gears 5 news anyway oh yeah Dave Batista is going to be a playable character in Gears following um, the release. Yes, it's about fucking time to quote the man himself. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know how he wasn't in it ages ago, considering he is basically the fucking poster child for what they were going for, for the Cogs people, these massive giants storied up like human like human monsters uh so yeah i don't see how it took this long but it's cool that he's in it i mean and i believe he's only playable in the alternate modes outside of the campaign anyway so hmm. sweet nice yep. yep cool cool change um next up cyberpunk is apparently going to have multiplayer um so this is they talked about multiplayer a little while back but at that stage they were saying that it was sort of in research and development and I was sort of toying with the idea um, and so on Twitter they actually put up a um, uh, like a update to this saying that yeah it's, it's moved past that and um, they've got a team working on multiplayer for Cyberpunk and they're hiring more people yeah what exactly that means not sure um, it's probably not going to be something that we'll see at launch because that game is what six months out um yeah it could be i don't know i don't like i don't know what cyberpunk multiplayer looks like no <laughs> neither do i unless it's top, you... in which case i'm all for that <laughs> <laughs> did you watch that um that deep dive they did i did yeah week? i don't have to be up at three in the morning any, anymore uh, to watch true. This stuff, so i watched it live nice. yeah they like it's changed how I was looking at the game because I was, guess I was sort of looking at it like it was going to be The Witcher, uh, mm. but sci-fi. But now I'm thinking it's more Deus Ex but bigger. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Like, like on a larger scale. But holy fuck, it looks amazing! I can't wait for it. Uh, I'm definitely going to play a hacker character. Uh, like 100. percent I that's that's 100% my jam like I can't fucking wait it looks so fucking sick uh just hacking stuff and yeah I don't really get the how like how that stuff at the start worked the hacking at the start of that sequence worked but I can't wait to find out I mean baby that looks rad mm. yeah yep. looks, looks really cool I um I watched yeah, I watched a bunch of that. I thought um, they obviously didn't show as much as what happened at E3. I think the E3 demo would have been about 50 minutes long. Um, this was more like a, a, a quick breakdown of that that demo, but with some developer commentary um, sort of intertwined. So, yeah, a bit of a, a breakdown of what's going on with that game. I, I dug it. I thought it was really cool. Like, they didn't show too much. Yeah. Like, I, th I feel like I'm at the point now where I don't need to see any more. Uh, what yeah. that game is like I'm pretty satisfied that it's going to be stupid um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm definitely king alright we've got some more news here do you want to do these ones because these are yours 
Sure. One of them, one of them, uh, one of them is. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Nintendo Direct happened just before um, this podcast. We did yep. this podcast, and uh, they announced they announced some interesting stuff, I suppose. Uh, there was... What was that fucking game that everyone fucking loved? Deadly Premonition. They've announced Deadly Premonition 2. Uh, and... Uh, some Smash characters or whatever the fuck. But largely what they were announcing was they're selling old-ass games on the Switch and people, cunts can't fucking wait to pay for the oldest games they know. Jedi fucking Jedi Knight 2? Jedi Outcast? September 24. Can't wait to pay for that! Uh, That's only a 17-year-old game, so I'm sure it will be fucking (laughs) top-notch. Like, that shit never ages poorly. Um, yeah, what else we got? Doom 64? Oh, well, yeah, let me give you money. Oh, can't wait for that. Oh, it's not like Nintendo 64 ROMs exist and are available all over the fucking place. And if you ever purchased Nintendo 64 and Doom 64, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to fucking emulate the game that you purchased. Uh, or what else? What else have we got? Divinity Original Sin 2 is available right now on Switch. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if it's a... There's a lot of reading in that game. Uh, Hopefully they've modified the text to make it a little bit more... uh, It was fine on my fucking massive fucking screen, but I I don't know. It might be a lot of reading for a screen the size of the Switch. Uh, Sorry, just to add. Yeah. Man of Medan. Fucking subtitles in that game are micro. Oh yeah, yeah. We really moved smart. our couch setup because we couldn't see it. Nice. <laughs> anyway, um, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Uh, first of all, fuck Xenoblade Chronicles, and second of all, why? Why would you buy that game again? Like, good lord, just emulated it on the Wii. Uh, if you purchased it on the Wii, you sh- there's no reason why you can't emulate it. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Return of the Obra Dinn is coming to Switch. Um, yeah, that's it. Anyway, uh, why why do people like why is it people are so fucking quick? They're so cynical about. They'll be like, oh. A new Call of Duty? Who fucking cares? I've already played the last Call of Duty. And then they'll be like, oh my god, fucking Jedi Knight 2 on the Switch! Yes! <laughs> Finally! Nintendo is listening to the fans! Ah, oh, they're doing the best stuff. It reminds me of fucking sports team shit, right? Like, it reminds me, like, I'm like, oh, how about OG? In the international, everything they did was fucking genius. You'd be like, what about the times they lost games? And I'd be like, yeah, they were losing on purpose just to fuck with people. Um, when clearly, you know, they didn't lose on purpose or anything like that. Um, but it's like, they're my sports team. So I'm like, yeah, they're the fucking greatest. Oh, LeBron can't do anything wrong. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Hook me up with those 15 year old games, Nintendo. I can't fucking wait. Yeah, let me pay. I just, I really want to give me money for shit I bought fucking over a decade ago. Anyway, moving on. What else we got? Oh, news wise, uh, preloading come to Epic Game Store. It's a big, big announcement they've got. <laughs> this is for Borderlands 3. Yep. Borderlands 3, uh, they're almost a um, real game store. That's pretty yeah. cool. Almost up to par with a with the basics that a, a game store should be able to do. That's nice. Nice work, guys. You get in there. I mean, it's still a pain in the dick to get a refund out of here, but it's a good step. Did you good try to get a refund for ancestors? You want your time back? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I wish. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. That's the news. That is the news. Uh, that is all we got. That's it. Cool. All right. Yeah. We can wrap things up. We got uh, the gap. Have we got any questions? No questions, but we did get an email. Yes. We did get an email from a uh, Mr. Norman Reedus at uh, uh, Mr. Norman Mark Reedus official at gmail.com. 
Uh, so obviously the official Norman Reedus sent us a digital reproduction of his dick. Thank you, Norman. Um, or as he called it, his Reedus. Hi, Luke and Joby. As a long-time Gap fan, I'm more than happy to provide a 3D digital copy of my Reedus for your own personal non-commercial use. Please use wisely and only in a safe or work purpose. Keep up the good gapping. P.S. Joby sure swears a lot. Uh, <laughs> this is a recurring theme. It's a fair cop, Norman. Uh, I'm just glad that you managed to send us uh, your your Reedus, uh, your the Reedus penis. Um, sadly, I extracted the file. This was the riskiest, riskiest <laughs> click of all fucking time. I'll tell you what, but I extracted the file. And it is a 3D model of a dick butt statue. Uh, so I am gutted that it wasn't. Unless, I mean, there is... I haven't actually seen Norman Reedus' dick. There's a chance that his dick is a dick butt statue. But I'm guessing it is not. Uh, so I'm gutted. I'm gutted that it wasn't a penis. Um, and yet I am also strangely relieved. Um, but... Nevertheless, I appreciate you reaching out, Norman, and uh, appreciate you taking the time to uh, let me know that I swear too much. But yeah, I, I, just, uh, I think it's too far. Like I've, I've gone too far now. Like there's no coming back from where I'm at, really. Sadly. Anyway, um, it was a good email. It was very entertaining. <laughs> High quality. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right, the gap. You can find us on iTunes, Android, Windows Store, Spotify, YouTube, all those places. Um, if you do have a moment, please rate and review the show. It helps other people find it. We appreciate that. If you want to send us any questions, like Norman Reeves did, you can go mm. to our, our email is the GA Podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Discord, the GA Podcast.com slash Discord. You can jump in there. We've got a bunch of different channels going. Um, I guess the big ones these weekend, next couple of weeks are uh, probably like Borderlands and Gears of War. If you're looking for people to play that with, jump in yes. on those yep. channels. You can find us on social media, facebook.com slash GA podcast, twitter.com slash GA podcast. You can go to our YouTube page, the GA podcast.com slash YouTube. And you can also go to our website, which is the GA podcast.com. It's got links to all the things we just talked about, including past episodes of the show. Mm. And that is all um, thanks to our Patreon members. They help run the site you can go to patreon.com slash ga podcast and subscribe if you want to help us pay some of the bills appreciate everyone that does that every month you're the best and, thank you yeah i think that's it for this week um anything you want to talk about that you've been working on uh, i've got a big interview that will be up by the time this is up um with rof uh who's a street fighter player for order mm. uh he was at meo over the weekends, obviously, yeah, MEO, Melbourne Esports Open was on over the weekends. And, uh, yeah, he was there just talking about um, the space, like the space that FGC, Aussie FGC fills in the OC Esports area. Uh, so it's, it's a, like, it's a good, interesting interview um, with some juicy bits. Um, so it's worth, like, worth a read. Um yeah, it's mostly future looking, but yeah, it's it's esports, pretty esports specific. The other thing, uh, Red Bull Fight or Flight, is uh, is now has now been announced, so I can mm. finally fucking talk about that. It is a PUBG tournament, um, where basically you will compete for forty five thousand dollars worth of uh, like prizes worth of. Price is valued at forty five thousand uh, dollars. So it includes a dick butt a, so statue. A dick butt statue, obviously. Um, <laughs> trip to the PUBG Global Championship Grand Finals. Um, yeah, I should see if I can fucking see if I can tag along. I'll just come <laughs> hang out with you. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's like fucking. It's next door to you. It's in Oakland. You were oh, already most it's of the way there. Far for me. I've got oh, the he's not going over the bridge. Stage. Oh, he's already fucking full blown San Franciscan. <laughs> How to speak San Francisco? Would you wanna? Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. 
So that's going the first first ones at PAX. Um, first qualifiers at PAX. They got some other online qualifiers and then uh, day of qualifier and then yeah the the finals take place at the Carriage Works on the second of November. Uh, but yeah, that should be good. Like it's a really fast paced format. Um, yep. They didn't do. We've been talking about this behind the scenes at Ripple for ages. Uh, they didn't take all of my ideas. And use them, even though obviously all of my ideas are the best. Um, but they did use uh, quite a few. And, One uh, circle, and it just contracts the entire time. No, my idea was uh, <laughs> you landed, and you couldn't. You're not able to, like, shoot. You're not allowed any combat until the uh, third circle, and then, <laughs> then combat starts. So everyone just sort of like gets into these gets into areas and then like they know where everyone else is but they can't shoot them and then it just fucking bang goes like fucking pops off it's just like fucking murderville um i reckon that'd be entertaining like the purge the purge yeah like the purge exactly yeah (laughs) um yeah but uh no it should be good and uh yeah so you can play you can answer if you're at pax i will be at pax by the way i booked my flights and my accommodation um, so I'll be at PAX all weekends. I'll be on a couple of panels. I don't know which ones just yet, but uh, cool. and obviously I'll be checking out the fight or flight qualifiers. And yeah, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's cool. It's cool that there's another fucking opportunity to win something playing fucking PUBG in mm-hmm. in Australia. And it will be like it's another land opportunity. I, I don't know that I think they're aiming for more amateur than um, pro scene, but like there's no reason why pros can't get involved if they want to. And yeah. Uh, yeah, like I think it's awesome. Um, so that's cool. What about you? You got anything or have you been too busy? No, nah, not yet. Um, I mean, there's some games coming out, so you there might be some stuff soon. <laughs> we'll see. Yep. Um, but otherwise, you can find me at twitter.com slash Luke Laurie. Nice. And I'm twitter.com slash Joby Jojo. Cool. All right. Sweet. That's it. Uh, next week, there's a lot. There's NBA 2K. Um, there's what else? Theoretically, there? Gears. Yeah, Gears and Borderlands. Um, so I think it's going to be busy. Still yep. waiting for most of these to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but they will. They'll, they'll come. I mean, there's more, right? There's more, isn't there? There's Greedfall, which looks awesome, uh, like piratey role player uh, that I probably won't have enough time to play. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's something else. I can't remember what. Oh no, it's fucking Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And it's only in my fucking on my radar because fucking racy won't shut the fuck up about it um i'm never gonna play it but fuck he loves monster hunter god damn yeah anyway yeah oh uh, here's a reminder for people that uh, destiny is moving from battle net to steam huh? you've got like 30 days to do that apparently so i did that on my account last night nice yeah i i have to load up my battle net again load into it so I can play Call of Duty. I got my, uh, I mean the beta. Oh yeah, yeah, I got a code for that. Not nice. Playing, it's too busy. It's oh, bad. too busy. Too busy for the theoretically biggest game launch of the year. Yeah, Ghost Recon is um, Breakpoint. You're too busy for fucking. For that. You're too busy for Breakpoint. <laughs> I'm not playing Breakpoint. Yeah. In this game. I've already played it. You guys can play it. We will. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's it. That is it. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? No. All right, fine. Fair enough. See you next week. Bye.